Thanks, guys. The Orange Bowl, a treasure chest of memories, yet maybe none greater than 10 years ago. Do you remember? The way that I remember it, now it's hard to believe that I remember it as well as I do, and it was 10 years ago. It is very vivid in my memory, and it's as if it happened yesterday. Yesterday was 1984. Reagan re-elected. Gretzky's first Stanley Cup, and the pass. Unforced the deep one for the end zone. Balin is down there. Oh, he got it! He got it! He got it! He did it! He did it! He did it! Flutie did it! I wasn't aware of what I was doing. I was just jumping up and down. It was one of those emotional things that happens once in a lifetime. A decade later, three national titles later, the Miami Hurricanes rule their domain. 61 wins and 63 tries since that November night. No question, the Canes own the Orange Bowl. Can lightning strike twice? Will the Eagles spoil a cane birth in the Orange Bowl? Maybe another memory tonight, Boston College and Miami. Well, you're looking at a live shot, and you hear the boos from the locals as the Eagles take the field against the number five ranked Hurricanes of Miami. Hi, everybody. Rob Franklin, and welcome once again to CFR Primetime, our final regular season game. You know, Dennis Erickson is not totally pleased with the way his ball club has played the last two weeks. He said they've not been as focused as he thought they should have. But yesterday afternoon, and we were talking down on the field, he said, Ron, this is a strange kind of team. It's like they mark on the calendar when they're going to be ready to play. And I said, Coach, what about tomorrow night? And he said, believe me, it's marked. They have a great deal of respect for Boston College. They don't want to happen to them. What happened to a Miami team just 10 years ago, they'll be set to play. Mike Godfrey joins me on the telecast as usual. And Coach, to me, I think you draw a bottom line and you say it is power. Power of Boston College against the speed of Miami. Ron, you're right. The strength of Boston College and the quickness and speed of Miami. And it starts with Warren Sapp on defense, number 76. And for Boston College tonight, they have to control him with the best pair of linemen that Warren Sapp's played against this year. Greg Landry, the left guard, and Pete Kendall, the left tackle. And you're going to see Pete Kendall. That's just a couple minutes ago before this ball game's to start. And I talked to both of them on the field, and they said, we have a lot of respect for Warren Sapp, but we're going to beat him up tonight. That is focus, what you saw in the tunnel right there. As far as offense for Boston College, they really believe in their tight end, and they have a great one in Pete Mitchell. Oh, I love Pete Mitchell. I think he's a great player. And you need a tight end against the two-deep coverage of Miami. He can catch the option routes about five, six yards down the field, but he also can work the middle of the field and inside the safeties about 15, 20 yards down the field. So Pete Mitchell has to be a weapon for BC tonight. Well, it's a very special evening here at the Orange Bowl, particularly for some graduating seniors. Let's go down to the sideline and check in with our third member of the party. Here is Mike Adamley. Mike? Well, Ron, Miami fans know their names by heart. Corwin Francis, Chris T. Jones, Frank Costa, part of a talented Hurricane senior class. Tonight, their final home game of their careers and moments ago. They were honored along with their families for deeds well done. What have they accomplished here at the Orange Bowl and beyond? Well, for starters, in 1991, a national championship, a record of 58 wins in 58 games, five consecutive bowl appearances, and a home record here at the Orange Bowl of 29-1. and one. Now, they may not be the greatest class ever to pass through Coral Gables, but they have been good enough to set a standard of excellence for future Canes to measure up to. Ron and Mike? Do we have an upset in the making, or will the Canes prevail? Coming up next not arrive here until last night. They didn't walk through. Dan wanted to get him here, let him go to bed, get up today, talk football, and then come to the stadium and play. And Ron, this is the first look they're going to have of the speed of Miami. It's the strength and power of Boston College versus the speed of Miami. Shipton, a couple of yards deep, he'll return it. Out to the 27-yard line. Now the starting lineup brought to you by Russell Athletic. The quarterback, Frank Costa, plays his final regular season game tonight, still with national title hopes on his mind. The receivers, this is an excellent group. Chris T. Jones, probably the best of that talented group of wide receivers. And at the offensive line, center Casey Jones gets the plaudits from his coaches for a job well done. Shipman. 
Shipman, who made the return from a couple of yards deep out of the end zone, is the player who is being attended to. And while we have the extra moment, let's check the starters on defense for Boston College. On that defensive front, defensive end Mike Mamula. He has 12 sacks, and Frank Costa is going to have to keep a very close eye on him tonight. The linebackers that was talking about Boy just a minute ago, he plays in the middle, and he's getting a lot of attention from some of the pro scouts. They think he is very, very good. And then the secondary, strong safety Eric Shorter. He has four interceptions, three fumble recoveries, and he is the best all around of that group. Mike, it looked as though he has a twisted leg, and this is how it happened a moment ago. The tackle is made, and he got caught underneath him as he was wrestled to the sideline. It was toll free on the tackle. So after a momentary stoppage of play because of the injury to Shipman, and they have just now gotten him to the sideline, we are set to play. Costa, almost 53%. 2,192 yards, 13 touchdowns, but 15 interceptions. You see Boston College shifting around. They will do this. They will stunt. They will stem all night long. They take the run. Pass is thrown complete. Daphnis, the tight end, and just as he delivered the ball, Mike Mamula was there to flatten him. It is a gain of 18 yards. Mike, this, uh, Ron, this Miami offense is a big play offense. 40 touchdown drives, only averaging 2.46, and seven touchdown plays of 50-plus yards. So where they hurt you is, and where they'll hurt Boston College tonight, is the speed of the receivers versus the defensive backs and the linebackers of Boston College. Only one setback this time. Three wide receivers to the bottom of your screen. Running play, Stewart up the middle. Has five, has ten, breaks it out. And is finally bumped out of bounds at the 24-yard line by Eric Shorter. Big play possibilities in this Miami offense. KC Jones is center number 63 with a good block and then a block, a second block on Stephen Boyd, which is really what springs James Stewart into the secondary. And you're looking at a back that weighs 235 pounds, 6'3", and runs a 4'4'40". So he's got good speed. Rich Olson, the coordinator, the offensive coordinator, says he's a fast Eric Dickerson. So the first play, they throw to the tight end, Daphnis. Good for 18 yards, and now a running play. Good for 31 yards, and they have a first down just inside the 24. DC going to be caught for offside. Tackle is made behind the line of scrimmage by Chris Sullivan, but I think it's going to cost him five yards. Ron, going back to Eric Dickerson, I thought he was pretty fast myself, though. <laughs> You and, and a lot of defensive linemen and linebackers and defensive backs. James Stewart is a real fine college football player at that back spot for Miami. Has the size, and they alternate backs. They'll play three or four running backs. Larry Jones has shown very well, senior out of Gainesville. And also Alfred Shipman. We thought we'd see him a lot tonight, but we'll have to get an update on his status because they are still attending to him on the sideline. Five yards stepped off against BC. It'll be first and five. In the flat has it complete to German. Jamie German will take it inside the five-yard line, and Mike, for the life of me, I thought Lemelski over on the left side came up out of his stance before the ball was snapped. I may have missed that one, Ron, but the problem that BC is going to have with Miami all evening, I alluded to it early, is the speed of the receivers once they catch the football. You're going to see Jamie German, number seven, catch the football. Now, Eric Shorter, number six, will move up to make the tackle, but the speed of German is enough to get him by and pick up five six more yards Miami quickly back to the line of scrimmage it is a first and goal from the five Stewart hit at the line of scrimmage it's going to go for no gain and let's go to the sideline and get an update from Mike Adamley Mike what do you have right now Ron and Mike Miami trainers are pretty sure that Al Shipman has nothing more than a twisted left knee 
They're going to check him further and then hopefully return him into the ball game. Okay, that is good news for Hurricane fans and also good news for Shipman. As we said, he's only a sophomore out of West Palm Beach, and we were expecting to see him a lot tonight in the ball game. Ryan Collins comes in quarterback. Larry Jones also comes in. Now they brought Ryan Collins in against Florida State and they were using the rollout pass because he's a runner and a thrower at the quarterback position. Yep, that's what they were going to do. Defensively, Boston College stayed at home and the ball is intercepted in the end zone. Michael Reed with the pickoff for BC. Good pressure by Ed Santabria, number 56, who didn't really buy the fake of Ryan Collins. Now, they had success against Florida State sticking Ryan Collins in because he's a better runner than Frank Costa, but he just made a bad decision here. Michael Reed, number 17, with the interception as they try to get the ball to Sae Tucker, number 81. Big play by the Boston College defense and a mistake by Ryan Collins. This is Green. He'll take it for five yards. Oh, my goodness. And you see right now the intensity, and this is what, Mike, what we were talking about. That's Kendall, who is up at a little scuffle after the play. They're trying to send the message to Miami. In the lineups, David Green, who just carried the ball. He only needs 27 yards to reach 1,000 for the season. The receivers, tight end Pete Mitchell. He has 50 receptions. Every time he catches another pass, it's a BC record. This is a very good offensive line, and they're tough, as you can see right now. Pete Kendall, the best of that group up front. First and 10, Boston College, a 10-yard burst, right off right tackle. C.J. Richardson comes up to make the tackle. The pickup is nine yards. Here are the starters on defense for Miami. Defensive tackle, Warren Sapp, one of the four finalists for the Lombardi Award, which will be given out in Houston next week. Great group of linebackers, but 52, Ray Lewis. He's on a lot of people's All-American list. Folks, he's only a sophomore. And in the secondary, Carlos Jones at corner. They say he is the best cover guy in that secondary for the King. Green hit at the line of scrimmage and knocked down by Kennard Lang. Ron, here's the message that Boston College wants to get across to Warren Sapp. We're going to double you with Greg Landry and Pete Kendall, number 66 and 63. They get a little get a good push on Warren Sapp. Came back right back on the next play and another double team on Warren Sapp. But that allowed Kennard Lang to get free inside and make the tackle. Warren Sapp is going to get hit around a little bit by Pete Kendall and Greg Landry tonight. You say he may be a little sore come Sunday morning, huh? He can dish it out, too. That's a... Uh... Hansel looks for the screen, and this is Green. He'll take it almost to the 40-yard line. Ray Lewis, from the middle linebacking position, is out there to make the stop, and now the situation for stop BC. Five, they have a third and down, and the line to make is the 45. The whole key, as you uh, talked to Dirk Cotter, the offensive coordinator before the game, is they want to stay alive in this ball game as long as they can. They don't want to lose, get behind 14, 21 points. They want to move the clock, stay close with this Miami football team, and get built confidence as the game goes along. just beyond Kenyatta Watson's hands. Okay, they did a nice job, Rod. Pete Kendall, again, number 66 on Warren Snap, Warren Sapp. And now here goes Pete Mitchell, the tight end. He will do the snapping on the punt. He does about everything for this Boston College football team. We talked off the top of the telecast about how they use him for everything. Mitchell, not only a record-setting, team-leading receiver with 50, Beckley is the punter, but he also handles the long snaps. Nine-man rush at the line of scrimmage, but the Hurricanes had the return on, and this is a low-line drive. Out of bounds at the 19-yard line. So for the Miami Hurricanes, 
defensively they do the job after BC picks up one first down as we head to break no score for the Orange Bowl in Miami Frank Costa second offensive series for the Kings had it going going for the end zone Collins came in at quarterback and threw the interception Gets his pass away, overthrown, and again, Mike, the minute he got rid of the football when they had gone to a straight drop, he has been hit as soon as he has unloaded the football. I think for Miami tonight, this is the best defensive line group they may have faced all season, uh, even with Florida State. Did you see the pressure? Pass out to James Stewart. And also, Ron, on the other side of the ball, this, I believe, is the best offensive line they faced this year. You see Boston College, 13.9 points allowed, second fewest in the Big East, so they can play defense. It was Joel Bryan, who's a junior out of pants in Massachusetts, who uh, pressured the quarterback on the last play. Pressure up the middle, and there's your middle linebacker, Stephen Boyd. The senior out of Valley Stream, New York, and he drops Costa for the first sack of the night, and all the way back at the 14-yard line. Jim Reed, the defensive coordinator, said about Steve Boyd, he's the type you love to coach. His eyes are always wide open in the meetings, practices every day with the same intensity. Doesn't make mistakes. Third down, and Miami needs the 29-yard line to keep this drive going. Costa going to be hit, and he sacked again, this time at the six-yard line. Giannakakis, the sophomore out of Lyons, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. We didn't get to see him in the last outing that we had BC. He was suffering from a concussion. But Nick comes through with a huge sack right here, and BC stands to get awfully good field position. Ron, Miami has had problems with the long snap in previous games. Florida State blocked a couple punts, so Boston College may choose to go after this one. Ryan Clement in to handle the punt. Gets his kick away, and it's an end over end. And yet Watson lets it bounce away, and now Miami picking up valuable real estate here as it will go across midfield and go dead at the 45. That is a 49-yard punt. Aesthetically, it left a lot to be desired, but it certainly got the job done. No score. 8.39 left in this opening quarter. The space away from the rest of the team. Trying to focus. This time they pull the guard, but the running play will go absolutely nowhere. As Corin Francis, from his linebacking position, comes up to knock it down for a loss of five yards. Corwin Francis really was able to step up with his quickness and beat the block and make the play on David Green. And again, the, the key for this Miami defense, the same way as on the other side of the ball with the receivers and the running back speed, is the linebackers in secondary. They run so well, they close the angles down very quickly. And the worst thing that could happen to you against an unbelievably quick Miami defense is to lose five on first down. Rolls the pocket, sets the screen. Pete Mitchell, the tight end, back over the middle at the 50-yard line, and he'll take it to the 49. Kennard Lang is there to make the stop, and now for Boston College, it will be a third down and four. Folks, you've got to be impressed with Pete Mitchell. I think there's some great tight ends around the country. Jamie Asher, Christian Fourier, Kyle Brady at Penn State. Here they're working on Warren Sapp again. They allow him to come in now. They block him so well. Now here's Pete Mitchell on the screen makes the catch and now he becomes a pretty good runner after the catch Hartzell in the pocket good protection now it breaks down lobs it deep got a man there Pete Mitchell was tackled and frankly it was a smart play because it was going to go for six points CJ Richardson just reached out and grabbed his ankle but just talking about Pete Mitchell, he's like a receiver at the tight end position. He has outstanding body control, and he runs his routes like a wide receiver. 
He's 238 pounds. Just a little curl. Now he sees the quarterback in trouble. Now here's the smart thing by a receiver. Sees the quarterback in trouble, takes off down the field. C.J. Richardson is beat, stumbles a little bit, knows that Pete Mitchell's behind him, tackles him, and with the rule in college football, a good move. Ron, in the first ball game of the year, Pete Mitchell caught 12 passes against Michigan. From that point on, most of the teams they played doubled him. He's such a threat. He blocks, he runs routes, he snaps on the punt. He's an outstanding player. Marvin Davis, Mike, number 93, a freshman out of Homestead, Florida, was injured on that last play and has had to come to the sideline. Mitchell in motion. And they go with the counter tray. Green to the right side will take it inside the 30. And it'll be second and short. Well, in the National Football League, the Patriots and the Colts tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, at the RCA Dome in Indianapolis. Both teams tied with five and six records. This game could determine the AFC East wild card. Colts running back Marshall Falk leads 91 to become the 27th rookie with a 1,000-yard rushing season. 8 o'clock tomorrow night here on ESPN. Ron, that's the end of the first quarter. Officials are coming over, at least on the scoreboard, there's uh, the clock's messed up then. Hard to say, you uh, was off you quick. certainly got my attention. That'd be a 23-minute quarter. They went <laughs> blank on the scoreboard. This is a good start for Boston College. This is what they wanted to do. Mike, to use a basketball term, what Dennis was saying yesterday when I asked him about this BC club, it's like the old basketball term of when they talk about team wants to play in a phone booth. They don't want the wide open thing. They want it in close, slug them out, hard no, because they control the tempo of the ball game. Then. And Dennis knows full well, if he goes into the third quarter or the fourth with BC either tied or close, he really has got more than he can say grace over because this this good good football team. There's no doubt about it. And when we set this game up at the beginning, we said it's strength and power of Boston College versus the quickness and the speed and the skill of Miami. So if you're a power football team, you want to punch at this defense. Pittsburgh had some success, and they went back to look at that film of running up inside of this Miami defense, not running laterally, but running counters and running dives right at this defense. Well, glad to report that Marvin Davis is uh, back out on the field of play. Number 93, who was shaken up just one play ago. So he comes back in at defensive tackle. The clock malfunction has been taken care of, we would assume. Six minutes, 53 seconds left in this opening quarter. Three touchdowns allowed in six Big East games. The rest of the Big East, 161. This has been the trademark of this Hurricane team for many years, defense. Same play. Green up the right side. Ah, not only has the first down, but he'll pick up four more. And now more pushing and shoving. And here come flags from every direction. Landry with a very good block on this play. It's a counter play, and Greg Landry was the lead blocker, number 63. Personal foul against the Hurricanes. Greg Landry, number 63. He's pulling. He leads the play. David Green with good yardage, and then they pick up the penalty. It's a frustrating Miami defense right now. Mike, it is. This is a tough bunch of kids from BC, and what they're trying, as you said, to send a message early on here is that. Miami, we will not be intimidated, not in your backyard or anything. Well, it's like a fist fight. You call somebody outside, you better be ready to fight. <laughs> and it looks like BC is ready to punch. Mitchell in motion. Here they come back with a counter again, and this time Warren Sapp is right there as Justice Smith had come in at running back, replacing David Green. As soon as he got the handoff, he got tackled. Warren Sapp. Warren Sapp, number 76, is just going to beat the block here. I believe maybe Pete Mitchell may have missed the block on Warren Sapp. He came inside, made the tackle on Smith, number 42. Justice Smith again will operate at running back. It is a second down and 10. 
The ball resting at the Miami 11 yard line. Quarterback draw. Hartzell will take it for four. C.J. Richardson up from the secondary. And from where they've marked it, they're going to give him a gain of five. So it'll be third down for the B.C. Eagles. Boston College uses a movement, a lot of movement with Pete Mitchell tight end. And this is an area of the field where they may move him a little bit and try to sneak him through on a pass route inside or outside. So Pete Mitchell would be a target that I've picked. If I'm Miami defensively, make sure I know where he's lined up at and where he's moving to. See what Dan Henning has come up with here with the third down. Set. Looking, looking, now drills it. That's Mitchell at the one. Touchdown, Boston College. Say, I just keep, I just can't tell you how impressed I am with Pete Mitchell and what he does for a football team. Really, Mark Hartzell's a really a little bit slow in throwing this football. See how open he is? Then he delivers the football. Chad Wilson, number nine, tries to make the play, but Boston College draws first blood. David Gordon comes out, senior out of Avon, Connecticut. Trying to put uh, his club up by seven to nothing. Beckley holding at the 10-yard line. Low pass, gets it up, and the kick is good. Jamie German. This will be German from the four. Out to the 22, Mike Adamley. Let's go back to you. Ron and Mike, that frustration you were talking about, much more evident down here on the field. It was a direct result of that James Burgess 15-yard penalty for a personal foul, mainly because of what Boston College's offensive line has been doing to do been doing to Miami tonight, and that is pushing them around. The Canes unaccustomed to that kind of treatment. Sit up front. James Burgess is the linebacker that came in for Rohan Marley when he got hurt, so they said he's really been improving each week. Well, let's see what the Canes come up with on this series. First time they had the ball, 18-yard pass play, a 31-yard running play. But on the last series, BC shut him down. Stewart breaks one tackle, takes it across the 25, and then Brian May, sophomore out of Valley Cottage, New York, will stop in. Frank Costa, senior out of Philadelphia, 6'4", 215 pounds. He has had his moments of frustration at this university and also some uh, great moments of exhilaration, particularly back uh, on the night they played Florida State here. That to Costa was as big a game, he said, as he's ever won in his life. Over the middle. Complete at the 50 yard line, and let's check with Mike Tarico for the first time tonight. Mike, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, the other two Florida Division 1 A teams started the day 9 and 1. Florida State scored 28 in the fourth to get back in it, but Danny Cannell couldn't get out of bounds, didn't throw the ball away, but clock ran down. Florida, Florida State end up tied, and they both end up at 9 1 1 records. Mike, if anybody had told you that the Florida State would score 28 in one quarter in that ballgame the way they were down, you probably would have taken that wager, wouldn't you? <laughs> we all would have. Just shy of the 50-yard line. The pitch comes back to Stewart. Breaks off the tackle and picks up six, maybe seven yards more. And that's an example of a good running back picking his feet up rather than uh, running with them dragging. Ron, going back to that Florida-Florida State game, if Florida beats Alabama next week, that'd be a great rematch in the Sugar Bowl. James Stewart, again, a powerful running back, keeping his feet moving, picking up good yardage, good blocking along the offensive line by Ricky Perry. That'd be a nice game if they could beat Alabama. That'd be a heck of a replay. Uh, Florida, Florida State, and the Sugar Bowl. You think they they want to play each other again? I think they would. They'd like to finish that game. <laughs> it in the backfield, nothing for Stewart this time. It's going to go for a loss. Is 97 Joe O'Brien. Second time tonight that O'Brien has made a tackle for a loss. 
So much size up front by Boston College. Joel Bryan, 6'4", 275. And when you look at that front now, they're not only just big individuals, they can move. Given the offensive line of Miami fits here in this first quarter. Let's look at Chris Sullivan, number 93. Junior out of North Attleboro, Massachusetts. In the back of Stephen Boyd, the middle linebacker. Third down for Miami. Now the line to make is the 40. Pressure from the outside. And he gets it away to Stewart, and he's going to be crushed for a loss again. Stephen Boyd, the middle linebacker, and you could see the pressure coming on Costa just as he unloaded. They had a twist on in the defensive line, a little X move inside, and Mike Mamula went inside, took the blocks of the offensive lineman, but then was able to come back up. Going to see the little twist move to the left. Mike Mamula, number 59, will come out and make the play on James Stewart. Also might give credit to Nick Giannakakis. He was back there with pressure as well. Clemens punt. This is Watson. And good coverage for the special teams. He will be stopped just shy of the 20. That's a 38-yard punt. 7 to nothing. The Boston College Eagles lead. We have 1.28 to play. Opening quarter. Justice Smith, the running back. Ron, in the first series, we're going to take a look at Pete Mitchell. Now, Pete Mitchell hurts you a lot of different ways here with a, just a curl route. A smart player takes off when the quarterback's scrambling against C.J. Richardson. Here he is in the flat, off motion. will catch the touchdown pass against Chad Wilson, number nine. But when you're in a one-back offense, when the tight end moves like that, he's like a fullback in this offense even though he's lined up a tight end. To the sideline. Did he catch it? Outstretched? They say no. Incomplete. Kenyatta Watson is the man who was parallel to the ground about a yard short of the first down. But they say he trapped the football. And now third down, B.C. Talking about Pete Mitchell, he almost quit his freshman year. He's from Michigan, he but he went home for a week and attended a small uh, college football game. Said there was 150 people there, and he thought to himself he has it pretty good there at Boston College, so he went back, and, of course, the rest is history. I think you're looking at a, a player that's going to play well in the next level also. Yeah, I think you're exactly right, Mike. Got all the right stuff. Hartford. Good protection again, and this pass incomplete. Now, there was contact before, but Clarence Cannon could not catch the football, and it is punting time for Boston College. Good ovation for this Miami defense. Here's Pete Mitchell again in motion. Now he's going to come back. Remember, now he'll go out for passes. Now he's a he's a blocker. He's blocking on Kennard Lang, number 96. That's a pretty good job. Dan Henning said he's like a boxer when his, with his blocking style. Now he's snapping for the punt. <laughs> All-around player. Beckley with the punt. Good coverage kick. Very hot. German all the way back to the 29. Comes down at the line of scrimmage and we'll check that. 52 yards on the punt by Beckley. Procedure is the call against Boston College and let's see if Miami's going to make them do it over again. Okay, Miami has good field position here. I think I'd turn it down. Illegal motion against the kicking team. Penalty is refused. First stop. Now that we got that settled, Mike Adamley, let's uh, find out what you've uh, got up your sleeve for us now. Talked about senior Pete Mitchell. You know him and Stephen Boyd had a list of fifth-year seniors for Boston College who have played under not one but three different coaches. Jack Bicknell, Tom Coughlin, and now Dan Henning. You know, they've seen it all during their careers at Chestnut Hill, but a win over Miami tonight would cap off a, a, a great career for all of them. And that's three pretty good coaches to play under. Jack Bicknell, and, and that group is pretty solid. Constant going to go up on top. He's got single cover. And the ball is knocked away at the last moment. 
that was Daryl Porter who went up and took the ball away from A.C. Tellison. When you look at the statistics of Miami, they get a lot of big plays, and how they get them is to throw to their big wide receivers. A.C. Tellison is 6'4", going against Daryl Porter, who's 5'9", but a nice job by Daryl Porter to knock that ball away from Tellison. Mike, that's probably a pretty good plan for uh, Miami in this game, though, because of the difference in size with the wide receivers and the shorter defensive backs, right? And, and really a good good scheme if you can catch them in the right defense and not in too deep coverage. Costa with a draw play. This is Larry Jones. Crosses the 50. And finally a stop down at the 40-yard line. That's going to be a gain of 17 yards. I think that's an excellent call by Dennis Erickson, especially when the Boston College front is trying to work so hard to get to Frank Costa. The draw opens. You, as you see, the Boston College defensive lineman, they just roar up the field, get a good block by Saeed Tucker, number 81, on Stephen Boyd, number 50. And Jamie German picks up another block downfield. Larry Jones off for a good run. Don't be standing up doing this. Go in there and get that shit going, all right? The first quarter with our score, Boston College 7 and Miami nothing. Jones, the lone setback. They swing the pass out to Jonathan Harris, and he's going to take it down to the 30-yard line. That's a gain of 11 as Brian May comes up defensively. Now the plan looks like for Miami, they hit him with the draw to slow down the rush, then the little three-step drop in the quick throw out to Jonathan Harris, trying to throw the ball quick to offset that rush of the Boston College line. Jonathan Harris comes out. Trent Jones, a freshman out of Miami, 5'8", 182, who wears number six. Checks into the ball game at tailback. Miami trying to get back in it. They're down 7 to nothing. Short drop this time. Pump's going to go on top, going for the end zone, and it is overthrown. Mike Tirico, let's check back with you. Ron, the wind chill in L.A. is 30 degrees for the Notre Dame-USC game. Notre Dame drove right down the field, but a bad exchange on this handoff. Forced Notre Dame to settle for a field goal. They're up three. Mike, I would imagine that the wind chill from Lou after that fumble down on the goal line was below three. <laughs> I don't imagine there was a warm reception for the offense over on that sideline. Second down, second and ten from the Boston College 30-yard line. Draw play. Jones keeps his feet. Is close to 10 yards in the play as he'll take it down to the 21 yard line. Chris Sullivan finally put a stop on it. Ron, interesting. They hit Boston College right where Mike Mamula's lined up, but watch what he does. He fakes the rush. Now he was going to be back in pass protection. So they hit him right in the area where Mike Mamula left the area to go back to cover for a pass. Sometimes you get a little lucky. Show the situation. Third down. Not quite enough for the first down. One or just less for the Miami Hurricane. Wide open. Trent Jones. First and goal, Miami. Michael Reed shoved it out of bounds. This was a checkoff all the way to Trent Jones. What's going to happen here with the coverage is going to bring Trent Jones just right in the flat because of the coverage of Boston College playing off. Trent Jones is going to be wide open in the flat. A good move and a good call by Frank Costa. He changed that play at the line of scrimmage. Ball resting squarely on the 10-yard line. First and goal. Turn it back upfield, and that stubborn BC defense, led by Stephen Boyd, will stop him for maybe a half yard gain. Joe O'Brien really makes this play, Ron, because he beat the block of Zeb Lemelski. I'm going to see him beat number 97, Joe O'Brien. So there really wasn't any place for Larry Jones to go outside. Turned it back inside, and Stephen Boyd who makes a lot of tackles from tackle to tackle, make the play. Also, you can see Brian May was there to make the stop with Boyd. This is the eighth play of the drive. Second and goal. Coming 
the blitz in the corner. Pass has gotten away, and it's overthrown, and the blitz pays for Boston College. It's now third down. Well, they brought Stephen Boyd, the inside linebacker, and brought a strong safety, I believe Eric Shorter, off the corner, trying to pressure Frank Costa not to give him enough time to throw the football. Stephen Boyd, number 50, on the blitz from the outside, right in the face of Frank Costa so that he couldn't have a good throwing lane. Yes, yes, yes. Miami likes Jamie German down here, number seven. Well, let's see if they go to him, Michael, on a third down and goal from the 10. He's going to come with a blitz again. Costa over the middle, just tipped at the last moment. Terrence Wiggins got the tip of his finger on it. Boyd with the rush. But it looked as though they were going to come up with the touchdown. But Jonathan Harris had it deflected right away from him. Well, you look at what uh, BC's doing against that set because there's no backs in the backfield. Five receivers, so Stephen Boyd was on the blitz, and he again pressured Frank Costa. Just didn't have time. Dane Pruitt, you can see his numbers, 10 of 11. This one, an attempt from 27 yards. And he's got it. So let's take a break. 12 minutes, 40 seconds until the halftime. Boston Cottage 7, Miami 3. from the 10. Here comes a flag from across the way. That was thrown from a very long distance. In fact, now there are two down. Push in the back against Boston College. Mike Adamley, what do you have? Well, that 27-yard field goal by Dane Pruitt tied Carlos Huerta's school record here at Miami for consecutive field goals. That's 11 in a row. But interesting thing about Dane, you notice he has a cast on his left hand. He fractured his ring finger on his left hand two weeks ago trying to make a tackle against Pitt. So he's had to give up his punting duties. Those kickers like to mix it up, don't they? <laughs> and many times are outsized in what they try to do. Well, the penalty denies Boston College pretty good field position. They get a scrimmage now from the 14-yard line. Green maybe a yard. Kenny Holmes stepped up into the hole and made the hit on him, and it was not much of a surge that time as the defensive front kind of collapsed that offensive line. Well, if you're going to beat Miami, you have to have good offensive line play. This is George Warhop, young offensive line coach for Boston College, an excellent football coach, and he knows that he has to get play, especially out of Greg Landry and Pete Kendall and Tim O'Brien tonight. Underthrown, you could see he just threw it in the hold, and there was nobody really close. Ray Lewis, 52, the middle backer for Miami, was the closest guy to it. Here's Warren Sapp again, number 76, being double teamed now by Pete Kendall and Tim O'Brien, the center. Still gets passed and eventually gets to Mark Hartzell, but the pass play took too long by Boston College. Warren Sapp is not getting frustrated, he just keeps working. He knows if he's being doubled, somebody's going to come free. Three of seven, 22 yards in the touchdown. That's the Pete Mitchell. This time they roll it back into the boundary. Hartzell's throw is caught at the 31-yard line. Good for the first down. Kenyatta Watson, the sophomore out of Boca Raton, Florida. Goes high in the air to bring it down. And we're, when you're dealing with a Dan Henning football team, remember they used to dash when he was with the Washington Redskins a lot. They moved the quarterback around in the pocket. Mark Hartzell's going to move to the left this time to try to help against this Miami rush. If you're just joining us, it is Boston College 7 and Miami 3. That was a 16-yard pickup by the Eagles. Green on the sweep, blocker in front. Gets his shoulder squared away, and he'll pick up about three. 
Pete Mitchell, the do-everything player for Boston College, in motion. You never know whether he's going to stop, block inside, block outside, or go out for a pass. Here he gets a nice block on Corwin Francis, number 58. He just works hard the entire football game. Like literally, he never stops because of all the motion. And oh. that, he's moving all the time. He's the punt snapper. I mean, I don't know what else he could do for this ball club. Running play, Justice Smith tries to wedge himself in behind one of those big linemen. Kenny Holmes makes the tackle. And let's see from where they've marked it down. It's going to be a third down BC at about four yards to pick up the first. Dan Henning, Ron, two Super Bowls when he was with the Washington Redskins and Joe Gibbs, Super Bowl 17 and 22. And he really has done a nice job with his BC ball club. They started, they were 0-2, went up to play Pittsburgh, and he said that was the most important win of the season because in the transition year, he needed his players to stay with him. And the seniors showed such great leadership. They stayed, and now they're headed for a bowl game. The first two losses were at Michigan and against Virginia Tech. Pass is caught here, but he didn't get the first down, I don't believe. Grice caught the football, but as soon as he got there, Corn Francis made the hit on him, and from where they marked it, he's a yard short. Given Mark Hartzell a lot of time, again, you look at Pete Kendall, 66, and talk about a pretty good, impressive offensive lineman at 6'5", 286. He committed to Notre Dame, but decided and changed his mind to attend Boston College. So Beckley will have to kick it away and look at that average. Almost 47 yards per kick. Germany is the deep man for Miami. Now the Hurricanes had to return on the last time. Let's see if they come after it. Return again. Out of bounds. Kind of came over the top of that one like a, a hook in golf. And it's going to go out at the 30. It's only a 30-yard kick. We'll be right back. Fine student athletes. 7 3 our score. Boston College leads 9 0 7 until halftime. Thanks to Stewart. He's going to be shot. Third time tonight that they have gotten to him. Chris Sullivan. Chris Sullivan, another defensive lineman going after Frank Costa. 42 sacks, the most in the Big East, and keep clicking them off because they're off to a good start tonight to add to that total. You know, another thing that's really in BC's favor tonight, it is a cool, pleasant evening. Not high humidity, nice breeze. They're not getting burned out the way a lot of clubs have to when they come in here. No, Mike. you're right. That's a good point. They hit a good night to come down here. Flags go down, and the running play is going to be stopped for no gain, and instead of third and ten, it's going to wind up being a second down and about six because I believe B.C. jumped. We've watched Frank Costa over the last couple years. He does a nice job with the cadence. He, he changes the cadence up, and... When you watch teams come in to play Miami, he always will draw the defense off a couple times a ball game. You remember the Florida State game? What was it, five times? Five or six in that ball game. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Bowden was going crazy on the sidelines saying, what in the world? Warren Sapp, boy, uh, every time he has looked up tonight, there's been another huge white jersey in front of him. Boston College has uh, really had a good scheme to try to keep him out of their hair tonight. The big jersey has a 66 on it. <laughs> Costa with a short drop and out in the flat. Has it complete. And let's see. Did he get the first down? Christy Jones. Whoa. They're going to. If they spot it there, Mike, that's a very friendly spot. Nope. They're going to make it shorter. Again, you look at the receivers for Miami. Chris T. Jones is six foot four. Is working against Daryl Porter on the side, and Frank Costa really puts something on this pass. A nice route by Chris Jones. He's trying to stretch the football out past that marker, but didn't get the call. Third and short. Jones missed it by about three quarters of a yard. 
James Stewart. And as you can imagine, they give it to the big running back. Breaks off a tackle. They might have stopped him for a no first down pickup, and he muscles his way for eight more yards. Shorter finally stopped him. Well, you're right. Joel Bryant had a shot at him, but you're talking again about a 235-pound running back. It's moving with good strength. You're going to see the penetration by BC. Joel Bryant, number 97, got a hold of him, just can't bring him down. Power running of James Stewart. Eric Shorter finally makes the tackle. Every coach in America has the, the same cry. You can get a 245-pound 4-5 running back. Go for it. <laughs> That's what they can do for you. Shorter. Pumped it. Going to go up on top. And he's got a man open, and he overthrows it. Oh, my goodness. Yatiel Green had beaten the defensive back. He had him biting on that fake. Daryl Porter had to try and play catch-up but the ball was overthrown. Well, Daryl Porter does a nice job here. He gets a little piece of Yatiel Green. Now, he's going to run a little hitch, and then he's going to take off. But watch Daryl Porter get his hands on him right there, just enough to slow him down so the ball's overthrown. And that was that's all it took, Mike, because that was about a step or a stride less than he would have been downfield. Under pressure, overthrows it. And let's check again with Mike Tirico. Mike? All right, Ron, real quick, want to show the folks one of the more exciting plays that nobody probably saw today. Ole Miss against Mississippi State. Ole Miss Josh Nelson to LeMay Thomas. 83 yards for the score. The lead changed hands six times. Three Anthony Bowie runs to give the Bulldogs a four-point win. Now that's that's another of the heated rivalries that, uh, as he mentioned, probably a lot of people don't realize, but that one's as hot as any of the other big ones around the country, Mike. Going to be third down. Danielle Ferguson, number one, has checked into the lineup at tailback. Costa drills the pass, almost intercepted after it went through Marcus Wimberly's fingers. Now, for those that are booing, in his defense, he's not getting a whole lot of time to throw the football. No, and that ball should have been caught, really. A thrown behind him, but Marcus Wimberly should have had it. Now, this is Zeb Lamelski, a big 311-pound tackle. Looks like he's holding on for dear life on Mike Mamula, number 59. Here's the pass. Should have been caught by Marcus Wimberly. On it to punt for Miami. This is his best one. Wow, that's a good one. And a turnover. Watson is hit just as he catches the ball at the 14-yard line. Booker Pickett. So we'll take a break. 6.57 until halftime. Eagles by four. Really helped the Hurricane. Helped Miami a lot. Sets in the pocket. Boy, does a good job of running for his life and then throws it complete at the 25-yard line. Brian Saxton, one of the other tight ends, he's 6'6", 256, came back to help out his quarterback. Here's the change now that Miami's making. They're going to a five-man front right here to try to put pressure, and there's only three defensive backs in the ball game. So Boston College, what do they do? They check off and try to throw the pass to get Brian Saxton open on the corner, number 86 for the reception. Miami's staying in that 5-3 look now, Ron. Right, for those who might have thought that Hartzell was not real quick on his feet, he showed otherwise on that play. Justice Smith, and there's not much in the middle. Corwin Francis, number 58, the senior out of LaPorte, Texas, steps up to make the hit on him. And let's go down to Mike Adamley. Mike? Ron, if Warren Sapp didn't have enough trouble getting double teamed on every single play, his backup, Dwayne Johnson, out for the game because of back spasms. He's been plagued by them all season long. And to make matters worse for Miami, they're very thin at defensive tackle. You might remember that Patrick Riley, who was having a great season, was lost for the season against Pittsburgh two weeks, weeks ago after undergoing knee surgery. Okay, Mike, so Dwayne Johnson, the senior out of Bethlehem, out for the remainder of the ball game for the Hurricane. Running play, Justice Smith, only a couple of yards. Ray Lewis, the middle linebacker, comes up to pop him. And now it's going to be third and long. This is a good adjustment by Miami. 
against the running success that Boston College has had, bringing the extra defensive lineman in. Now, here's the extra defensive lineman. That's number 50, Baraka Short. So that gives them five down linemen now, three backers, three defensive backs in the ball game. Tough to run against that set. Ray Lewis made the tackle. Well, Mike, what do you do to counter that five minutes? That's a passing attack. You've got to be able to throw the football against that lineman. and he overthrows it. Kenyatta Watson is who he wanted, and he had a step on Carlos Jones, but the ball was overthrown. So again, Boston College has to punt. Ron, here's the answer, but if you're going to throw, you have to throw on first and second down because if you don't, then they make the substitution. Now, there's only four defensive linemen in the ball game, so the best down to throw was first and second down, not third down when they bring in the extra defensive back. German is back deep. It's Beckley who will get this punt away. Good coverage kick. Very, very high. And German signals for the fair catch and makes it on a 47-yard kick. Well, the 1994 sap should win a few. Yep. Next week, one of the first ones, the Lombardi Award down in Houston, Texas. He's one of the four finalists. Ball is thrown and it's complete. Did he catch it? Yep, they say he did at the 34. Jonathan Harris out of the backfield. They're knocking Frank Costa down on every play with the pressure that they were able to get to him. Joel Bryan, number 97, knocked him down on the last play. Second down and very short. Stewart comes back in a tailback. On, and it should be go to in the short yardage play and be able to have the first down. Clock is about to go under four minutes once it restarts following the moving of the chains. That was Stephen Boyd again, number 50, the middle linebacker who's just shadowing the one back that Miami has in the backfield. Stays right with James Stewart, and he made the last play. Mike, Miami has done an awfully good job keeping Mike Mamula silent for the most part tonight. I mean, compared to the nights that he normally has. He's done a, he's done a good job. The offensive tackle, Zev Lamelski over there, but the night's early, and Mike Mamula has made some things happen with his pass rush. What a catch. Jonathan Harris. He stands only 5'9", 170 pounds, but he went way up in the air and brought it down. Santa Bria puts the stop on it. Now they're working Jonathan Harris against the linebacker, number 56, Ed Santa Bria, because when you go to that trip set, Ron, usually the inside receiver will be working against the linebacker, and that's the adjustment that Miami has made now. Jonathan Harris versus Ed Santa Bria, number 56. And it doesn't take a genius to figure out that's not a matchup that you want, but you count from the outside, and as Mike said, that's the way the number matchup winds up. Second down and short. Running play, Stewart cannot bounce off this stop, and O'Brien again. Joe O'Brien, a junior out of Hanson, Massachusetts, has had an outstanding first half. You're right, Ron, and you look at two different one-back offenses tonight. Miami has a one-back offense with, they really don't have a lead blocker to pick anybody up. When you look at Boston College's one-back, with Pete Mitchell in motion, he's like a fullback, so you do get the lead blocker. Sixth play of this drive. Stewart comes out. Jonathan Harris back on the lineup. It's third down, about a yard and a half. Thank your pardon. It's Ferguson who is in there. Ball is thrown. Has it complete at the 42-yard line to Marcus Wimberly. And just as Wimberly turned around, that ball was already in his chest. This is Zeb Lamowski, number 77, doing a pretty good job again on Mike Mamula. Again, Mamula gets to Frank Costa, but he's able to get the ball away to Marcus Wimberly. Tim Marbido, number 58, was in on the play also. So they're still getting a good push on Frank Costa, but he's doing a nice job of getting rid of the football. About to go under two minutes until halftime. 7-3, Boston College. It has not been an easy outing for the Miami Hurricanes by any four. 
Ferguson gets the handoff. Got to be hit at the line of scrimmage. And Tim Morabito, number 58, the junior out of Garnerville, New York. Broke free in the middle and knocks him down for a loss. Let's see if they're going to spot it at the 43. One yard. Second down. Total yardage, 172 Miami, BC 91. But uh, the result on the scoreboard is BC leads by four. Pressure from the outside. Puts it up on top, and it's going to be knocked away by Daryl Porter. Almost had the interception. Chris T. Jones is who they were looking for. Well, Porter has been caught in single coverage several times tonight and has done well with it. He has. Uh, what really makes this defensive play, oh, Stephen Boyd with pressure. You're going to see Frank Costa. He's going to get hit by Stephen Boyd, but he's able to get the ball up in the air, but you want that ball thrown outside, not inside. Daryl Porter makes the play. Really, Christy Jones has to become a defender on that play. And Ron Mate, it's a matter of time till they get Jamie German the football. He is probably the, the, the best receiver they have on this football team and the most dangerous this Boston College defense. As far as an explosion waiting to happen is what Mike says. Ball that was over the middle, tipped and knocked away, incomplete Michael Reed. That is the tenth time we have just been told by the stat office. Ten times that Costa has been knocked down tonight after throwing the football or while he's throwing it. I was talking about Jamie German on this route. You're going to see number seven, Jamie German, the outside receiver, really comes open on this play. Runs by Daryl Porter, and he's wide open. They just can't get in the football because there's not enough time for Frank Costa to look around. Ball is going to take a Miami. Nope. Goes into the end zone. Look for a moment as though it might check up. Michael Reed just ran away from it. We're coming up at halftime. The GMA had none of that. Well, I think they would just kill the clock here, Ron. Be very happy with a 7-3 lead. They go to the draw play, and Green will take it for five yards straight ahead. Marvin Davis defensively. And with that run right there, we mentioned in the lineups tonight that Green only needed 27 yards to go over 1,000 yards, and he just did it. Let's take a break. 43 seconds until halftime. It is very, very quiet in this Orange Bowl right now. And the reason for that, BC has kind of taken the crowd out of the game. Here's the screen pass almost intercepted for what would have been six points by Kenny Holmes. Good heavens. Well, I just said a little bit ago that I thought maybe they'd kill the clock and uh, go in here at halftime, but they almost hit a disaster there with Kenny Holmes number 90. But this is a safe call. Just a little safe screen, and it's, as soon as I say it's safe, Kenny Holmes, number 90, is, who's six foot four, almost picked it off. Now I run the ball. You you forget sometimes that, that Miami defensive ends who weigh close to 250 still have vertical leaps of 38. <laughs> and Miami still has three timeouts left, so now it uh, becomes a point to make the first down. Draw play, and it's only going to go for a couple. Warren Sack will make the tackle on Justice Smith. Now, here comes one of those timeouts. And now you at least go for the punt, try to block the punt, so you force them into a kicking situation. Warren Sapp shaking up a little bit on the play after making the tackle. So Miami takes the timeout. 32 seconds left until halftime. There's the block by Tim O'Brien, the center. And I couldn't see what happened after the ball care went down. Sandwiched, I think, Mike. He's okay. I think it just kind of knocked the wind out of it. He ended up on the tackle along with Ray Lewis. He's now running off the field on his own, so he's okay. He's just had a lot of people, a lot of big bodies hitting him and falling on him tonight. Beckley, imperative, and he gets a good one away here. Beckley to kick it away and to the man that Mike keeps talking about. German is the deep guy for Miami. And here's 
coming after him this time. So a line drive kick. Flag is down at the line of scrimmage. And German, here comes another flag from the other direction, and still another. Gonna be looks like it's gonna be on BC, so Miami will force him to kick again. You have to think it's going to be offsetting, though, wouldn't you, Mike, from where that when downfield was thrown? I would think so, and uh, that they would kick again. <laughs> but not the way they're walking. <laughs> they're walking back against Miami to the 20-yard line. Illegal formation against the kicking team. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. That penalty is refused. A block in the back by the receiving team. That penalty will be enforced first down. Well, tonight's shots from high above the Orange Bowl here in Miami are from the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes from Pompano Beach, Florida. Great look of the uh, airship tonight as we got a wonderfully clear night in Miami. Mike, who in the world turned, who declined the penalty from Miami to wind up and get them penalized, Tim? I'm not sure exactly what happened on that play, and I'm not sure Dennis Erickson knows either because he looked like he had a puzzled look on that. I, I, either somebody misinterpreted, but that's certainly not the way they would want it, I don't believe. Costa is going to be hit, and he is sacked behind the line of scrimmage. Giannakakis is the man who got him. Four sacks in this first half by Boston College. Mean thing that Miami has to do now in the locker room is work on pass protection and go back to the run a little bit. Well, that's the end of the first half with our score. Boston College 7 and Miami 3. Now let's check with Mike Tirico for the GMAC halftime report. Mike. Won the toss and they deferred. Warren Sapp on the near sideline trying to get his defensive charges going. Watson one yard deep. Gets it up the near sideline, pushed out of bounds in the vicinity of the 25. And here are the first half numbers. Ron, as you look at the statistics, I mean, they're dead even. You take the one turnover for Miami when they were going in to score, and they substituted Ryan Collins into the ball game. That's been the big play of the ball game. But statistic-wise, pretty even first half. Tackled for a loss. You see those numbers right there. It's Hartzell, 6 of 12, 53 yards, one touchdown. Warren Sapp. Boy, on the sideline, he was really jumping around, trying to get his teammates fired up to open this third quarter. Green. Straight ahead with his surge, and he'll have a couple of yards. Ray Lewis from the middle linebacking position. And we'll keep an eye on this running game and numbers here in the second half. As Dan Henning said, that's what they got to have. They have to maintain that. They have to because they want to move the clock, number one. But number two, they want to set up their play-action passing game. As you see, David Green just moving over to the 1,000-yard mark, 1,007 rushing yards this season. Out of Fox Lane High School, Mount Kisco, New York. a little running room but not a great deal Marvin Davis one of the first men to get there and make the hit also Ray Lewis getting up here's the play again on Warren Sapp now Warren Sapp's on the shoulder of the center so number 63 Greg Landry you're going to see the block here blocked down with the center Tim O'Brien double Warren Sapp so he cannot make movement along the line of scrimmage but when they do that run the little linebacker is going to come free and that's what you're going to see a more aggressive linebacker for the second half third down the line to make is the 34 yard line Hartzell gets it away incomplete Chad Wilson was the closest man to it, number nine. Marvin Davis and Warren Sapp with pressure. Marvin Davis, they say, is a clone of Warren Sapp. 
high school fullback that played in the Florida, Florida Georgia All-Star game as a fullback and won the state wrestling championship at South Dade High School here in Florida. Well, Warren's enthusiasm on the sidelines seemed to have uh, gotten the task at hand taken care of on that opening series of the third quarter. One, two, three, and out for B.C. Off the side of his foot, German waiting for it. Gets a good bounce, and he'll try to return it. Oh, he get whacked at the 30. That's a 46-yard punt. Let's take a break. 7-3, Boston College. Let's go, baby. Hi, may I help you? Yeah, I need some shorts to play basketball. Indoor or outdoor? Uh, outdoor. Uh, full court or half court? Half, I guess. Uh, pick up or play. Shirts or skin? Excuse me? Uh, day or night, home or away, team or one-on-one. -on -one. Is active wear becoming too specialized for you? Try Discus Athletic. Heavyweight sweats and tees. The active wear that's right for however you play. Discus Athletic. The way America plays. Floor sore. Pick. Uh -oh. What is it? Nothing. Excuse me. Don't you just love the wind through your hair? What I have left. of Saturday Night CFA is brought to you by American Honda, who's been making quality automobiles in America for the past 12 years. Our thanks to Captain Marshall and the crew of the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes for tonight's overhead coverage. The Goodyear Blimps are now in their fourth decade of live sports coverage. Very clear and beautiful skies tonight in South Florida. 7-3 Boston College. And we'll see the Hurricanes on offense for the first time in the second half. Passes pass is caught by Christy Jones. One thing I thought Miami might do in the second half, and they open right up, doing it a tight end here. Now they're going to keep him in the block. That's Gerald Daphne. So now they're going to try to help on pass protection by keeping the back and the tight end in, only running a three-man route. So pretty good, pretty good move by Dennis Erickson. Good completion there. That'll slow down that rush a little bit. What does BC do to counter that, Mike? They're going to get more pass coverage, and if they're going to do that, then they got to come from the split inside a little bit more. But again. It's a tough, uh, when you're going to run three-man routes against heavy coverage, it's tough also. Passive ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage, almost intercepted, and it was Mike Mamula who got a hand up. Mike Mamula is, is being blocked, but is able to get his hands up and in the throwing lane. 59, Mike Mamula working in, against the tackle. Now, he's, he still made it, but he's going to be able to move and get Ricky Perry's to offensive tackle, but he was smart enough, Ron, to raise his hands and deflect that football. That looks like the plan of Miami. Keep the tight end in to help in pass protection. Mamula's been held more tonight, more than a newborn. Hasn't been called yet. Where's he going to go with this one? Threw it out of bounds. And it was Mamula again. He must have heard you. <laughs> he is really a tough defensive end, Mike Mamula. Very impressive. Don Nalen, we were talking to him in West Virginia the other day, said he really plays with great leverage and great heart. Here's Mamula again, just collapsing the pocket of Zeb Lamelski, number 77. But there's the important part of him. He never stops. He continues to play and tries to get a hit on Frank Costa. 
And the bad news for the other folks in the Big East is he's a junior, folks. Lackawanna, New York. Has a man wide open. Good for the first down at the 40-yard line, Chris T. Jones. Chris T. Jones is a very good receiver. He originally signed with Pittsburgh, and they didn't allow him into school. They didn't accept him into school, so he came directly to Miami, and has been a solid receiver down here for Dennis Erickson. 6-4 frame, makes that catch. Look at cradle that football. Concentrate, keep his eyes on the football. Made the catch, worked up the field. Working against Tony Ransom, number two. scrimmage at the BC 40. Here comes the blitz. They swing the pass out. Jonathan Harris. And Harris finally dragged out of bounds after a gain of 10. You know, you said something interesting at the beginning of this game when you said Dennis Erickson talked about circling this game. I see more emotion out of the bench right now, Miami. They're into a little bit more. Even if you look at Warren Sapp, he's down already on the 30-yard line. He's following the football down the field. So they're no longer sitting on the bench. They're all in this thing together, right. excitement-wise. Look at that. Good shot, They're guys. off the bench, and they're on the field, and they're pulling for this offense to get the lead. Point is, he said that they had marked this game, that he thought they were ready. Boston College, I think, also marked this game tonight. They're ready to play. And both in red pens, too. German makes the catch, and as soon as he catches it, he catches Michael Reed. Since he's tough to handle, especially, Ron, when you're going to blitz and Boston College blitz. And again, this is a good adjustment by... Miami, that's a tight end again. They're keeping him in the block. They're keeping the back in the block. So now you've got a three-receiver route, but you've got heavy protection. And that's what makes this play to throw to Jamie German, number seven, against Michael Reed. Good, good plan here by Miami. Now Boston College has to adjust now to go to a little bit more coverage against that set. Now you see the offensive line flipping. And Costa's going to have to call a timeout as he came to the line of scrimmage. Strength was to the wrong side. Let's take a break. My advice to you is get a prelude. The designers of Sega's all-new NFL 95 wanted you to know what it feels like in a real NFL game. So they gave it the real teams, the real players, and a brand new feature that lets you see 65 yards downfield, just like in real life. Go deep, go! Oh, my God. Sorry, Mr. Montana. There's even a new trading feature. I just bought a house. Uh. Lately, Mike and I have been driving around, you know, trying to find the perfect house. It's going to have a fenced-in yard and a little garden. And inside, we want lots of windows, hardwood floors, and a big brick fireplace. <laughs> and just know we're going to find it. I know it. At Fannie Mae, we're the nation's largest source of funds for mortgage lenders. Call us for a free guide to get you started on the path to home ownership. 11.55 left in this third quarter. Miami with their first offensive possession. And Mike, they have not had one running play. Everything has been a pass in this opening drive of the second half. Well, I'm sure Dennis Erickson at halftime said, we've got to get better pass protection. Let's keep an extra man in the block and let's throw the football. Our three wide receivers are faster than better than their defensive backs. To see the 35-1 and one record in games played in November for Miami. They swing it out, Jonathan Harris again. Boy, that is a tough isolation that it happened so quickly. Michael Reed defensively. Ron, you talk about running plays. To me, this is a running play. 
because it's a little short pass. It's like a toss sweep. Just throw it out there to Jonathan Harris. And you see Dan Henning a little concerned about what Miami's doing on offense right now. Now James Stewart checks in, which means a 245-pound fullback. And let's see if they may go to the running game a little bit inside the 15-yard line. Boston College, Jim Reed, defensive coordinator, with an excellent plan in the first half against this Miami defense, Miami offense. That's what they're going to do, and he's going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage, and the first running play goes for a three-yard loss. Stephen Boyd comes in to make the hit. Now you know why the first seven were passes, <laughs> because they're very difficult to run against. And one thing, when you look at that last set, there's an uncovered receiver outside, and uh, usually Frank Costa will check off and throw to the uncovered receiver, but didn't do it on that play. So it's going to be second down. It is a loss of about four. Going to take it to the three-and-a-half-yard line to pick up the first down. Quick pass right over the middle and hit immediately by Daryl Porter is Yateel Green. They're still coming. When they go to that set, which is no back set, boy, Boston College is heating them up. And Daryl Porter, when you do that, your defensive backs can move a little closer and play a little tighter because you're not going to give Frank Costa a lot of time to throw that football. Mike, guess who's back in the ballgame? Alfred Shipman, who injured his knee on the opening kickoff. Number 32, the bottom of your screen is Shipman. Defensively, they creep up on the outside. Blitz comes, pass right over the middle, has it complete, A.C. Tellison. That's the strategy, and I like that strategy by Boston College. See, there's no backs in the backfield, so they're going to bring people off the corner here to put pressure on, to not give you a lot of time. Now, see how tight the defensive back is? Makes the play right away. That's Rob Clifford, number 25, so you force him into the field goal. Good call by Jim Reed, the defensive coordinator. So Dane Pruitt will come out to attempt the field goal of 25 yards. He is 11 of 12. He hit one back in the first half. High pass from center, gets it away anyway, and he nails it. Take a break. Great job by Mike Chrissy to bring down the high pass and get it down. I work on cars for a living, so I know top-notch parts when I see them. And so does my Pronto Pro. Save now on quality Pronto Auto Parts during our grand opening celebration at our newest location in Homestead on US 1 and 296th Street next to Walgreens. These top-notch products and more, all at one low Pronto price. Like I say, when you got to get it right, get it Pronto. <laughs> Patco Auto Stores, the real parts store with real parts people. From the Homestead Sports Complex to the Country Club, and even the expanding community college, Homestead's back in business and better than ever. Hi, I'm Lenny Zabo from Spitzer Dodge, and I'd like to welcome back our old friends and make some new ones. The Ram Tough pickup in the club cab model with a Cummins diesel or Ram Tough custom conversion pads. High top, low top, loaded or basic, both as tough and as luxurious as you want. So come down to Homestead and stop in the Spitzer Dodge and see some of the best cars, trucks, and vans in town. Radio Shack to kick off ESPN's NFL Pro Bowl sweepstakes. To enter, drop by any Radio Shack, vote your favorite players into the NFL Pro Bowl, and you could win a trip to see the game in Hawaii or great Radio Shack prizes. Here comes a voter now. She cuts left. She's racing towards the ballot box. Uh-oh. I hope you're voting for me. Vote for you? You couldn't sack a bag of groceries. Whoa! ESPN's NFL Pro Bowl sweepstakes. Enter at Radio Shack. Seven to six. And you're looking at Dane Pruitt, record setter. He is about to uh, kick this one off, and we'll have more on that from Mike Adamley in just a moment following the kickoff. And you see that cast on his left hand. That in an attempt to make a tackle. Frank Costa just having gotten off the phone and visiting with the offensive coaches upstairs. Had a good looking drive, but then it stalled. They do come away with the three points for the first time they've scored since back in that opening quarter. 
Watson. This will be Watson from the five. Watson breaks it open across the 30 to the 34. Mike Adam Lee, let's talk more about the record. Well, you talked about Dane's record. He now has broken Carlos Huerta, the great kicker from way back when, not so way back when. He now has 12 consecutive field goals, a Miami record. And also, Ron, the word on Yatiel Green, the wide receiver, separated right shoulder. He's out for the remainder of the game. Boy, he got hit very hard on that uh, pass right over the middle. So he will not be back. And this one tonight, 7-6, Boston College, still on top by one. Pass play taken up to the 40, Kenyatta Watson. Kenyatta Watson. Wilson. Warren Sapp again double teamed by Greg Landry and Pete Kendall. And in the center, I'm sorry, Jim O'Brien's on the double team with Greg Landry, able to keep him away from Mark Hartzell. And again, not allowing a big play. Kenyatta Watson with the catch. Under nine minutes to play, third quarter. Throwback, Pete Mitchell. Looks for a block. He gets it. He has the first down. It takes it out to the 49-yard line. When, when you run a screen pass, you've got to be a little bit of an actor, both as the quarterback and the recipient of the pass. Pete Mitchell does a nice job here. Coming in motion. Now he's going to block like he's protected against Kenny Holmes. Now he leaves him alone. Mark Hartzell draws the rush to him. Then the quick throw on the screen. Ray Lewis eventually in on the tackle along with C.J. Richardson. That was Tim O'Brien, the center, who first had to handle Sapp. Then he got out and got just enough of Ray Lewis to help his teammate pick up the first down. And Hartzell wants a timeout. Well, college basketball, the direct TV grade eight, the inaugural tournament of two-day college basketball regular season festival featuring seven of the eight finalists in last year's NCAA tournament. This is the schedule. Game one, Florida against Boston College. Game two at 9.30, Duke versus Connecticut. Then on Wednesday, game three, it's Purdue against Missouri. Game number four at 9.30, Arizona versus Michigan. Wednesday, the direct TD grade eight. Ron, that Miami this year had four bad minutes of football against Washington. We'll take a look at it. Here's a screen pass. First of all, they came out in the second half, and they were supposed to receive the football, and then some kind of a mix-up in their selection. They threw, they decided to kick instead. Here's an interception that went right back for a touchdown. And then here's the final score. The ball's fumbled in the end zone. They were ahead 14 to 3 at halftime and got beat by Washington in that ball game here. 38 points. And only lost the other nine games, just 8.2 that they've given up. Justice Smith comes in replacing David Green at running back. He gets the draw. Straight ahead. Boy, you can see the safety come up and really plaster him. C.J. Richardson. Dirk Potter. Ball is loose, Mike. Does Miami have it? Well, the official is trying to take the football to spot it. I don't think no. that they had given it to Mike, but that he was putting his hand forward and wanting to discuss it with another official, and everybody thought he was saying ball the other way. That was C.J. Richardson that really put on the good lick. There's Ray Lewis getting an arm on. Then there's C.J. Richardson finishing him off. And that ball's out of there. Justice Smith, number 42, he fumbled it. But D.C. keeps the football. Quick screen ball is tipped. It's intercepted. Kennard Lang. Warren Sapp. 
You expect the great players to eventually make the big play, and Warren Sapp with the tip makes the big play. A little quick pass where you just really cut the, de the defensive lineman, and they didn't cut Warren Sapp. Kennard Lang, number 96, with the interception, and we look for big plays. Now here's the Miami offense's chance after Warren Sapp gives them the big play. Let's see if that emotion translates into something other than a field goal for Miami. They can get points at all. Pressure, he's going to be sacked at the 46. That's five times. Giannakakis comes over to make the tackle, and the young sophomore out of just outside of Chicago has been tough tonight. And, Ron, you talk about a chess match. Matt, this is a chess match between the offensive coaches of Miami and the defensive coaches. Jim Reed, the defensive coordinator. Boston College went to heavy coverage on that last play, and really there was no place for Frank Costa to throw the football. Miami allowed five quarterback sacks tonight. Miami and a free play. Big opening the way down for the first down at the 35-yard line, and the flags that are down is going to be B.C. offside. Offside, defense, penalties refused, first down. 19 yards on the carry, and uh, Mike, you get the feeling that this powder keg is just about to blow. Well, they've got a long uh, stand here where they've won a lot of football games, and Warren Sapp has given them the big play. Now it's up to the offense to get in a position to score some points for the Hurricanes. 7-6, Boston College. 6-28 left to play, third quarter. That man is pacing because he wants some points. with the running play. Ferguson breaks it open big at the 20-yard line. Rob Clifford finally grabbed him, but they go from the big back to the little water bug and great results. Terrell Green, number 51, will get a block here. The big block gets also picks a good block up Malin Allen Simonette, number 66. And the speed of Danielle Ferguson, number one, puts Miami in good field position. Taj Johnson comes in at wide receiver. Shipman back in the ball game. But it's Danielle Ferguson, number one, who stands deep seven yards behind his quarterback. On first down, Ferguson. In the middle of that line this time, Morabito is the first one. He got a piece of him and then a lot of help from those interior folks. Looked like some movement by Tim Morabito, a little slant move right inside to make the play on Danielle Ferguson, number one. I think in the first half, Ron, if I'm correct, Jamie German had one catch. Still the most dangerous receiver on this field for Miami. Well, he goes wide to the right. That's him at the top of your screen. Morabito is the man who got the jump. Now, did somebody move in front of him? No. Frank Costa again, but you tell your defensive lineman you can't get in the rhythm with a quarterback. You can't guess. You've got to read the football. You've got to have your eye on the football and that ball snap you move and not before it. Jeff is saying it's one of the interior guys who's closest to the football. So second and five. They stopped that running play, but now it's as good as being a five-yard gain on that running play. Breaks one, breaks 
two down to the 11-yard line. Eric Shorter finally took his feet out from under him. Chris Sullivan had him first, and he broke away from the tackle. It's going to be third down, Miami. Miami made a move to go to two tight ends on the last play to try to balance out that defense. Here's a tight end here, and here's a tight end over here. Now they're trying to balance that defense, but you see a little soft spot to the right here, and that's exactly where they hit James Stewart. Again, it's a great, well-coached football game tonight on both sides. the first down for Miami. It will be first and goal to Hurricane. Looking at Jim Reed right here in the middle of your screen. Defensive coordinator for Boston College. Used to be the head coach of Massachusetts. An outstanding coach. Really has made some good decisions tonight. His defense being threatened at this point in the ball game. Real good, solid plan, both teams. And they keep making adjustments. Well, Mike, let's see what kind of adjustments they can come up with here because that goalpost shadow is getting a little closer to it. Trent Jones, touchdown Miami. would take 41 almost 42 minutes in this football game for Miami to register their first touchdown of the night and they're going to go for two because of the two field goals it is a 12 to 7 ball game Brian Collins in the ball game again the rollout quarterback only play that we've seen him tonight he threw the interception and now he looks around he doesn't like what he saw and he calls timeout here's what Miami pulled off on the touchdown this man coverage right here and you're gonna see Trent Jones come to the outside these two receivers clear off and Trent Jones is just gonna outrace the man coverage pretty good call Daryl Porter number 44 just beaten by Trent Jones good call by Dennis Erickson. Here's a look at it low. Good protection. Trent Jones, just a little flare pattern. Pretty good position. Touchdown, Miami. Yeah, when they stretch you out like that with uh, the kind of speed that this football team has and you got the single coverage, you have to make an outstanding play or it's, uh, it's over for you. That's what happened there. Coming up tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time from Indianapolis, it's the Patriots and the Colts. Patriots quarterback Drew Bledsoe has completed 285 of 507 attempts, breaking a club season record. What about Marshall Falk for the Colts? Well, he needs 91 yards to become the 27th rookie with a 1,000-yard season. Patriots and the Colts tomorrow night. 8 o'clock here on ESPN. Ron, remember the big play by Warren Sapp. You figure the good, solid football players are going to come to the top eventually, and he made the big play that turned this football back over to the Miami offense. It's Thursday night. We talk about talking the talk and walking the walk. Well, he, he does both extremely well. He got his team fired up, and then he made the big play. Looks like a quarterback draw, and he is going to be held short about a half yard. Michael Reed is down at the bottom of that pile, and we have a five-point ball game. Miami tried to spread out the Boston College defense. No backs in the backfield, and this is what the Denver Broncos do so well with John Elway when they get inside the 10-yard line. The quarterback draw, Michael Reed, number 17, stops him short of the goal line. It's interesting when you have players on the sideline. He's don't worry about it. I'll get it back. And you know what? Everybody on that sideline believes him yeah. because he's done it <laughs> so many times here at Miami. 
Schultz, the turnover. Miami gets their first touchdown at the 4.02 mark of the third quarter. And they lead 12-7. First time that they have led in this ball game tonight. Boston College, as we uh, mentioned back in the first half, had a tough beginning. They had to go to Michigan. They got beat 34-26. And they came back home. They lost to Virginia Tech 12-7. Then they put together a string where they beat Pittsburgh on the road. They came back home to beat Notre Dame by 19. Then they won over Temple. They were tied by Rutgers. Then at Army, they won. They won against Louisville on the road. We had that one on a Thursday night. Then they won up Syracuse and were beaten by one point last week by West Virginia. This is Watson. He got a big opening here. 30 to the 40 and all the way out to the 43 yard line and Mike Godfrey on a 39 yard return this is the second best field position that they have had a kickoff return 39 yards first and 10 for Boston College Mike, look at these drives since they scored. 19, 14, 14, 20, 24, 34, and now the 43. This offense has been playing uphill the entire ball game. Walter Cronin intercepted by Miami, Chad Wilson. That pass just got away from him. The bad throw, Ron. Kenyatta Watson was open, ran a little smash route, just overthrew the football right to Chad Wilson. Well, here's the route right here. You got Pete Mitchell's going to run a corner. Kenyatta Wilson's going to run a smash route. But here is Chad Wilson, number nine. The ball is just going to be overthrown. See, Kenyatta Wilson's wide open, just overthrew the football. Wow. Was he ever open? And now Miami uh, heading for the juggler here is Chad Wilson with a good interception. Poorly thrown football. Now let's see if back-to-back uh, -back errors against uh, this Miami Hurricanes football team normally is most, most disastrous. Blitz right up the middle. Costa's going to be hit. He lost the football, and they say he was down. That is six sacks on Frank Costa tonight. See, this again, I, I keep talking about as I watch this game tonight, I'm admiring the strategy in this ball game. Mike Mamula, they switched him to the right side on this play. Now, you see how they loaded up inside? There's no one to come out on Mike Mamula. They busted the blocking scheme. Frank Costa with the sack. Mike Adamley, let's check with you. And, Ron, it's hard to believe that Mike Mamula was only recruited by two schools, B.C. and UConn. You grew up in Lackawanna, New York, as you mentioned, Ron. He wanted to go to Syracuse. The Orange men didn't offer him a scholarship, and two weeks ago, he had eight solo tackles, two sacks, and a blocked pass. You talk about a payback, I'll say. <laughs> well, he got the sack just now. Danielle Ferguson comes to the sideline and is finally going to be caught and pushed out of bounds at the 50. What Miami has done is really interesting. They've gone from the power back and they put in the Smurf type in Daniel Ferguson, and he's been a lot more effective. Well, he's been effective on the draw, and his speed really is making that work right now. He's got fresh legs coming in with a lot of speed, and to go back to what Mike Adamley said, Mike Mamula, you know, you find a lot of players in recruiting. He was really only recruited by Boston College in Connecticut, and, uh, you know, so many times we see ball players not heavily recruited turn into great football players, and Mike Mamula is just another one in that line. Third down and 10. Line to make is the 40. Costa's pass overthrown. And a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. We have intended for Wimbledon. No flag down. That's Tom Thamer, the referee out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. White hat on. Long discussion here. Wimberly is still down. He was shaken. Looks like he's going to have to clean his uniform. Procedure call against Miami.
Illegal motion. Offense. Refuse. Fourth down. Ron, put an asterisk by that series because in that sack by Mike Mamula, they switched him to the right side, gave him a front that they hadn't looked at this evening, and Mike Mamula with the big sack on Frank Costa, so they avoid going downhill a little bit more. Big defensive series by Jim Reed, the defensive coordinator. That's for sure. Pressure against the punter. Kenyatta Wilson is the deep man and has to run away from it, and the ball is going to go out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Special teams for the Miami Hurricanes has really made a difference here tonight. And Ryan Clement is about the third punter they've tried. He's a quarterback that they feel like could challenge for the quarterback position next year. Mike Adamley, let's check in with you again. You know, Ron and Mike, how long Dennis Erickson stays as coach of the Canes has been the subject of much speculation here in Miami. NFL interest? Well, no phone calls yet. There hasn't been any contact at all. And, and the only thing I've said different than I've said uh, in the last five years is I, I might listen to, to something that uh, might be interesting. But uh, uh, I'm so happy here, so happy with the players and the program. I, I can see myself being here until I quit coaching. So there has been a lot of conversation about what he's going to do. And he... He does not rule out the opportunity that if the NFL is there, that he might look at it. Well, I think he wants to stay here. College football, he's going to stay here. Now, pro offer may get him out of here. But if, for college people to look at him, he's staying at Miami. Second down and 11. Wants a throwback screen. Not there, so he goes up on top. And it is caught and dropped. Oh, my goodness. Kenyatta Watson got by the coverage, had his hands on it, and then dropped it. Carlos Jones is complaining like he was pushed down. Number 12, the defensive back. He is really unhappy about something. Because he, he really looked like he's in pretty good shape. Yeah, I'll tell you what he's mad about. He ran into the official. It was a pick play. The official picked him. Kenyatta Wilson, Watson, number four, had a chance for that play, but that's why Carlos Jones was mad. Ran right into the back judge. Well, we have got rain coming down here at Miami. Hartzell lops it, just overthrown. Clarence Cannon is the guy that he wanted. So it's kicking time, and again, Miami should come up with decent field position. Well, it's tough to throw against this Miami team in third down. If you look at Warren Sapp, you're asking if he's injured, and you can see the response. He's going to continue to play in this football game. So Beckley has got to get off a good one here. German is in a single section, and he has dropped off to around midfield. Good kick. Very good kick. German all the way to the 38-yard line. Breaks one. Breaks the second. And then good coverage at the 40-yard line. And here comes a flag. Boston College with great coverage. are going to give up 15 yards for what looked like a spear. Yeah, no doubt. It looks like it's Gordon Laurel, number 98, too, that's going to get picked up for this call. Dan Henning will be beside himself. And he should be. Personal foul after a 51-yard punt and great coverage. You can't use your helmet. You can't lead with your helmet. Ten ball. Personal foul. Late hit. Late hit. That's that's First down. First First down. First down. Well, that's, that's killer. That's that is a killer. Take a look at it right here. Here's the tackle on Jamie German. There's number 98 leading with a helmet. I don't know. He, he kind of hit with his shoulder, but uh, they're calling him for leading with his helmet. So the 15 yards, rather than the Miami 40. They get the ball back at the 45-yard line of Boston College. 12-7, Hurricanes lead, 1.30 to play, third period. 
George back in the ball game. He gets the pitch, turns the corner, has five, eight, and nine. Let's see where they spot it down. It will be a gain of nine as Wiggins and Shorter combine on the stop. What makes this play is Terrell Green, number 51, is able to get around the corner and block the defensive end to get the corner for James Stewart. Number 51, the right guard, he's going to come around, put the block on Mike Mamula. Just slow him down enough so James Stewart can get to the corner. And we said Marcus Wimberley was injured a moment ago. Uh, he will not return. He has suffered a concussion on that uh, pass attempt and breakup on the last series. Stewart to the right side, puts the head down. He'll have the first down at the 34 of Boston College. And Mike now in looking at that BC defense they look a little bit weary they have had to play almost the entire third quarter and they played hard Ron you got to credit Dan Henning and his coaches BC offense only 23 yards in this third quarter Costas pass overthrown incomplete it'll stop the clock with 21 ticks left Christy Jones is the receiver that he wanted compliment to Jim Reed the defensive coordinator paid to Frank Costa he said Frank seems like he's on a mission the Florida State game he said he's playing like to say I can do this and I can lead this football team and that was a big win for Frank Costa getting a lot of knocks as far as not winning a big game and again he beat Colorado out of Colorado I don't know what designates a big game I mean they're all big <laughs> that was Pete Mitchell on the sideline he would love for his offense to be back out there could be the last play of the third quarter Ferguson and Danielle will take it inside the 30 to the 29 and let's see if they get away another one. I don't imagine they will. Gianna Kakis makes the stop for Boston College. Down to four, down to three. And that is the end of the third quarter. With our score, Miami 12, Boston College 7. a million people live a better life with consumer loans and millions more plan for retirement we provided the security of life insurance for 15 million lives and while we'd like to be known for all the things we've done we're still a little better known for our building transamerica consumer loans retirement plans and life insurance Listen, this stuff that we make, it's powerful. It makes you the stuff that we make, it's power. Take it. Gather up your ideas, run with it. It makes you powerful. Just do something amazing. We're in your corner. We can't wait to see what you're going to do. The stuff that we make, listen, listen. listen. Here in Ohio, we tested the new Honda Accord V6 and discovered that the car more people buy than any other is now better and quicker than ever before. Now, why would you want a car that lets you get away so fast? You're late. You got your reasons. The new Accord V6 from Honda. So, what do you think? You look tough to me. You just don't see that these days. I'm impressed. I want those qualities on our team. You think we can get them? Let's go ask. Hey, that's how he said scout. Could you come over here a second, son? Yeah, you. Is it show, baby? Could you turn around? You know if these sweats come in teal? Is that seam double-stitched? Do you like the way it flows? Looking for tough athletic wear? Get Russell Athletic. Get tough. Flexible. Flexible. If you got a beard, we've got your number. Introducing the adjustable Maverick beard and mustache trimmer with six different settings. Man, does this do a number on beards. Maverick from Norelco. Excuse me, can I interest you in a change of pace? Change! Lens on your rebel! Change! Play on a whole new level! Rebel! Express 
yourself. EOS lenses and the Rebel X from Canon. 12-7 Miami as we head to the fourth quarter. The key play in that third period of play. Hartzell back to throw. Watch what happens. The great ones make things happen. Warren Sapp tips the ball. Kennard Lang is there. It led to a touchdown. Miami went for two points. They were unsuccessful. And that's how we stand heading into the fourth period. 12-7, Hurricanes on top. And Mike, listen to this number. Time of possession. We talk about how weary the BC defense was beginning to look. 9.34 possession time for Miami in the third and 5.26 for Boston College. Only 11 plays. Keep your eye on Trent Jones here. They've had success running that little flare route down here. Let's see if they go right back to it. go straight ahead with Ferguson and he is close to the first down but he won't have it and now a fourth down for Miami tried to fake that pass to Trent Jones and then gave the ball to Danielle Ferguson up inside Stephen Boyd made the tackle now let's see where the ball is going to be spotted Mike that's a clear two yards that they have to pick up Miami goes for it on fourth down. Same. Line to make the 24. Excuse me. Excuse me. I was going to say, same formation with Trent Jones out there again to throw him the football. The big goal with the running play. Ferguson hit in the middle of the line. He's not going to have it. The Boston College defense stands up, and it is Joe O'Brien who led the way. And talk about putting an asterisk by something. That series right there. And that's why I don't like the one back offense in short yardage because there's no lead blocker. Danielle Ferguson. You'll see Stephen Boyd hit Danielle Ferguson, who's a smaller back, and he just does not make the first down. And there's no lead blocker for him, Ron. You take Boston College on the other side, they've got the tight end moving in motion. Pete Mitchell, so they have a lead blocker. Miami does not have one in the short yardage situation. You have to believe that the cry from that defense is, hey, offense, keep the football for a while and get us some points. Justice Smith, the ball carrier, he'll take it for nine out to the 34-yard line. with him. Justice Smith keeps his footing. He'll have the first down. Mike Tirico, let's check with you. Ron, thus far it's been a less than exciting game between Notre Dame and USC. Sean Walters busting a 23-yard run, setting up a Cole Ford field goal. Game tied at 10. Thanks, Mike. 10-10, the Irish and Southern Cal. Some rivalries never change, regardless of what records are. Notre Dame trying to get that seventh win, so of course they'll probably go to bowl anyway. He was six wins. Our score, Hurricanes 12, Boston College 7. Just over 13 minutes to play. Justice Smith straight ahead. He'll take it for a couple. You could see Sapp had broken through, but they ran right by. It looked like number 98, Gordon Laro, was able to block back on Warren Sapp. He got so much penetration, but Gordon Laro was able to shield him from the ball carrier. Here's Warren Sapp, and he roars up the football field, but there's Laro just trying to get a little bit of bump on him for Justin Smith to get up the field. Justice, a junior out of Amsterdam, New York, 5'10", 181. See if they put him back in the offense here. He's open, but they're going to go longer. And the ball is in and out of the hands of Bryce down at the 36-yard line. Earl Little with the coverage. Like I thought, maybe he should have caught it. Mitchell was also open in this uh, short flat on this side. He was open for the little short throw. Pete Mitchell's out of Michigan, was not recruited by Michigan or Michigan State. Just going to see him run a stop route. He's open on the outside. As you see the linebacker, Corwin Francis, try to play behind. Behind him. Big third down for BC. Now everything becomes beat big here in the fourth quarter. Yep, you don't want a five play and out situation to put the defense right back out there. 
Watson. Deep over the middle. He's got it complete. That's Watson. And a first down for Boston College. Wilson and C.J. Richardson making the stop. Ron, I'm going to tell you who would be one of the tougher players I've seen play all year is Pete Kendall from Boston College. You talk about toughness now. And he mixes it up, mixes it up on that offensive line, and he gives it the whole football game. Now, this is an outstanding offensive tackle that I'm really impressed with here. Does a great job using his hands on pass blocking. He can come off running, and he's going up against Warren Sapp, the best in the country. David Green comes back in at running back. under pressure and he's going to be sacked and now here comes in a late flag Kenny Holmes made the sack Kenny Holmes runs a 4 6 40 he's an emotional leader of this Miami team face mask against Miami Kenny Holmes, number 90, just getting by the block. Getting to Mark Hartzell. And the penalty being marked off against the Hurricanes. Five yards from the previous spot. So it will be first down and five at the 39-yard line. Boy, talk about big plays in the football game. That sack would have had it all the way back inside the 45-yard line. And we've run out of asterisks, so we can't keep putting them on these things. Green, nothing there. Going to be hit and knocked down. He'll fight forward for one yard, but that was Kennard Lang who just rode him down. And then quickly, some help from Corin Francis. Here's Warren Sapp again, number 76. Fighting against the double team that ends up turning into a single by Greg Landry as you see Pete Kendall go on to block the linebacker. Warren Sapp will know he's been in a football game tonight with the Boston College offensive line. And all these kids up at the front seven on both sides are going to sleep real well. Second down. They fake the reverse. Now here comes the flag, and Hartzell's going to run it. And loses the football. Miami recovers it. Oh, I don't believe it. Corwin Francis. What a gift. Came right out of his arms and into Corwin Francis. And let's check the marker back at the 44. Second flag has been thrown where the ball was recovered. So erase the opportunity to score, add 15 yards. <laughs> Penalty is going to take the ball out to the 48-yard line, and it belongs to Miami. Mark Hartzell just looking for somebody to throw to. Now decides to run, but to the slippery ball, it's been raining. Ball's off his knee and in right into the hands of Corwin Francis. And you talk about the bounces of the football. Mark Hartzell's had a pretty good football game tonight. The wet turf and the wet football, he just didn't have a hold of it. In the second half, though, to Boston College, they've lost a fumble and also two interceptions. 12-7, Miami leads it. Pass back to the short side of the field. Chris T. Jones has it. Out of bounds at the 39-yard line, and Costa got decked again. Chris Sullivan hitting. Frank Costa going to get hit again by Chris Sullivan. He spent a lot of time on this turf tonight, but it threw a nice football to Chris T. Jones. As you look at the comparison, this half, three for nine for Mark Hartzell. Frank Costa stepped it up with the eight out of 12. One touchdown. 
So Hartzell, three of nine, two interceptions in the second half. And of course, that fumble just a moment ago, three in this in this game. Larry Jones with the ball again. Breaks it out, and he will have the first down. And Mike Tarico, let's check with you again. Ron, back out to L.A. where Notre Dame answers the USC field goal with a 10-play. 65-yard drive. Here's the big one. 17 yards. Paulus to Mays. Sets up a Paulus keeper. Irish by seven. Mm -hmm. Notre Dame coming up with some magic tonight. Looked like a pretty good throw from Ron Paulus. But, Ron, you had made a statement about number of plays, and you're right. This Boston College defense, how much more can they take being on the football field? break and the face mask penalty and then they turn it over on the next play. You can see the blitz. Miami picks it up. Pass complete over the middle. Chris T. Jones. Touchdown Miami. you just saw tired tackles well I think that and number two you credit that touchdown to Frank Costa first of all he was able to check off he saw man coverage they didn't disguise it Boston College showed the blitz he checked off to the post to Chris T. Jones against man coverage and lit him up for seven Daryl Porter on the coverage, but there was no, it was a good automatic, good checkoff, good protection. Ryan Collins comes in at quarterback, and they will go for two. You're going to do this till it works. The last time they tried a quarterback draw. And he's going to run it again. And this time he's going to walk in. So as we go to break, one more look at the two-point conversion. Miami 20, Boston College 7. The new Chrysler Cirrus has an advanced 24-valve V6. Its cab-forward design conveniently provides room for five and a vast array of new technology. It has dual airbags and advanced rail-through construction for superior handling and quietness. Chrysler Cirrus. While its name is derived from the heavens, one of the best reasons to own one is very down to earth. Chrysler Cirrus. It's not just a step above, it's the new plateau. This holiday season, Radio Shack has a 486 AST Advantage computer on sale for the incredible price of $49 a month for 24 months with no interest. Hey, there's lots of good reasons to buy one for the family. Dolores could balance her checkbook with it. Little Jimmy can do his homework. I can put the money we save right into his college fund. Zero percent interest, 24 months, $49 a month only at Radio Shack. Strap your helmets on. This is primetime NCAA football from the new Mindscape. 40 college teams, colors, and logos. Year long stat. Land in snow. Treacherous rain. 72 play. Boom crunch and playoff action. It's a hot new sports game from the new Mindscape. NCAA football. Get in the game. Thanks to an exclusive 8.4 volt power pack, the Black & Decker Ranger gives you all the power you need to finish any little project. Like a deck. The Black & Decker Ranger. Finish what you start. ESPN's presentation of Saturday Night CFA is brought to you by Chrysler and the new Chrysler Sierra Sports Sedan. Tonight's shots from high above the Orange Bowl here in Miami are from the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes from Pompano Beach, Florida. It's been such a clear and pretty night. A few clouds came over, had a little shower. Now it appears, as you get a, a good, clear picture of the blimp, that those clouds have moved away. Dane Pruitt to kick it off. As BC talks it over on the sideline, and all of a sudden they're down by 13 with 10-24 to play in the ball game. This will be Watson. He gets shellacked at the 15. Let's check in 
with Mike Adamley. Well, Rob and Mike, what you're looking at is the Sears National Championship trophy given to the team voted number one by the American Football Coaches Association. It will be here at the Orange Bowl the night of January 1st, but what is interesting is there are actually duplicate copies of this thing. You see the Coaches Association has their bases covered. There will be one in Pasadena and also one down in New Orleans at the Sugar Bowl. Okay. Which one's the real thing? I don't know. <laughs> 20 to 7. Miami has gone on top. Warren Sapp talks with his head coach on the sideline. And for people that don't think that a defensive tackle can be an inspiration or help turn a football game around, what this young fella did on the tip pass and the interception to lead to that first touchdown in the second half is exactly what happened. Give him a lot of credit, but I'll tell you who I'm going to give some credit to. The second half adjustments offensively, but Frank Costa, number 11, he was battered around there in the first half, got sacked, got hit, but really made a good decision here in this last play to check off and go in for the touchdown. Here's been a player that never gave up. He's another player that lost his position last year to Ryan Collins, never complained, didn't quit, didn't transfer, was able to hunt, hang in here, Ron, and now he's going to lead his football team into the Orange Bowl for the battle with Nebraska. David Green, the only setback for Boston College. Over the middle, Rice makes the catch, and boy, quite a blow delivered on him. So giving forward progress to the 19-yard line. The turnovers in the ball game. Miami just feasting on mistakes, that big plays, and after Warren Sapp tipped that football, this has been a different football game. Miami has scored 14 points of the three BC turnovers. Draw play to Green. Puts his shoulder down. He will have three, maybe four yards, but it's still going to be a third down. And they need to take it out across the 30. James Burgess defensively for Miami. go under nine minutes left in the ball game. Boston College came out and really proved that they were here to show they were not going to be turned away tonight. They led at halftime, 7-3. But in the second half, Miami has taken the momentum and they've gone with it. Running play will pick up the first down by David Green. Corwin Francis tripped him up. This is a time, Ron, when the, you get the fourth quarter and you get the opponent backed up that you can use some substitutes. Baraka Short, number 50, is in the game for Warren Sapp. Now, I don't know if Warren Sapp is injured or this is just the time of the game where they want to rest him a little bit. Seems to be okay. He is standing down next to Greg uh, McMacken, the defensive coordinator, on the sideline and talking with him. against Miami. Sorry, the ref's mic is not working. And speaking of mics, let's go back down to Adam Lee. Well, Ron and Mike, Warren Sapp, perfectly all right. He's been a one-man wrecking crew practically tonight, being double teamed on every single play. He was just getting a breather, getting a little water on the sideline. But what a night he's had. First down and five now yeah. with that penalty. it over the middle and just as soon as Green makes the catch he gets hit by James Burgess and let's check back with Mike you know you guys were talking about all the hardware that Warren Sapp will probably take home this year of course one trophy won't be the Heisman we know about that track record since 1986 the Bex any defensive player has finished his fourth the boss in 86 Edmund in, in 1991 and Marvin Jones in 1992 what's interesting Sapp is just a junior and there are some people who are saying that if he doesn't go pro this year, he probably has the best chance since Hugh Green in 1980 to break the offensive stranglehold on the Heisman. Wouldn't that be something? 
A lot of people thought Hugh Green should have won in 1980, but yeah. uh, came in second. This is James Burgess, who is being helped off the field. He was shaken up on the play. And the officials take the time to make the measurement, and it is a first down for Boston College. So back-to-back -back first downs. Marlon Barnes, a freshman from right here in Miami, number 56, comes into the ball game at the weak side linebacker. Miami 20 to 7. Clock runs again with eight minutes and 19 seconds left in our ball game. Mitchell comes in motion. Hartshill goes up on top. Looking deep, and it's overthrown. Wanted Clarence Cannon, but the coverage by Carlos Jones was right there. Miami does not give you the big play. Ron, this has been a tough football game all night. When you look at the, the uniforms of the players, and look at here, Tom Thamer, his jersey, his pants. I mean, he's had a rough night. He's going to have to send that outfit to the dry cleaner. Even the officials got dirty uniforms tonight. Second down and 10. Zings it, has it complete to Cannon. Across midfield to the 48-yard line. That was a bullet by Mark Hartzell. C.J. Richardson on the coverage. This is a young football team. When you look at Mark Hartzell, he's only a sophomore, 6'5", and this freshman backup, Scott Mutrin, out of Cleveland St. Ignatius, is, is going to challenge for that job. And Warren Sapp is now back on the field. On first down, quick count. Hartzell over the middle. Has it completed the 41-yard line. Justice Smith, they got him out of the backfield. And Burgess on the stop. Kendall and Landry will not allow Warren Sapp for that double team. Very difficult tonight for him to get in there. Made that big play on the tip. But Pete Kendall and Greg Landry played pretty well. Marshall's going to run, and he will have the first down at the 35. Marshall. Nice decision by Mark Hartzell on that play. So the Hurricanes have outscored Boston College 20 to nothing since that first quarter of play. 7-3 at halftime, then 9 unanswered, and 8 unanswered here in the fourth. Miami had too many players on the field, and they've just been flagged for it. Pass is thrown incomplete as a substitution started on the field. It's I think it's Short. Baraka Short, That's and all of a sudden he said, Baraka, we've already got 11, and he couldn't get off. Well, they got caught with a no huddle, Boston College. Tried to get Baraka Short on the field. Legal substitution, I believe. And Dennis Erickson saying, hey, we got him off the field. He didn't make it even to the numbers, but the call is still made. <laughs> He's well, giving him an earful. Yep. Dennis is not going to back off, but he knows that the 12th man was on the field, and that's the reason the flag was thrown. Clock whistled back in. We're about to go under seven minutes left in this one. Hurricanes up 20 to 7 and trying to hold on. BC with what appears to be their most, uh, most serious threat since back in the first quarter. Yeah, the officials looking here at the bench. I don't know if they called it on the bench here. It's going to be an interesting call. Just before the ball was snapped. Procedure, BC. the job Dan Henning's done. He's done a nice job here this year. First year at Boston College has put together a pretty good football team. Yeah, he really has, Mike. Done an outstanding job. What? And now 
Boston College calls a timeout, so let's take it with them. 7 8 left in the ballgame. If you and your wife are off to beautiful Kauai, Visa Gold's purchase power can pay for every romantic moment. Hi, honey. Finally came down. Not to mention a new pair of glasses. I wanted to tell you how much I'm enjoying this second honeymoon. And that I love you. Thank you. Because Jenkins Optical can make new glasses in an hour, but they won't take American Express. Who's that? Visa Gold. I've never seen him before in my life. If someone said they wanted a car that was as quiet as a Mercedes, yet as practical as an Accord, that handled as well as a BMW, but was as economical as a Nissan Altima, and that somebody said they wanted all of this in one car, you'd say they had their head in the clouds. And you'd be right. The Cirrus, Chrysler's newest cab-forward car. It's not just a step above. It's the new plateau. As a new parent, my hours can be pretty unpredictable. I think a lot of the young parents that come into my office and talk about life insurance have a lot of the same needs and have gone through a lot of the same things that I've gone through. Well, they're really looking for somebody to tell them about life insurance, to talk to somebody they trust. When people leave my office, I think they feel that, hey, this guy doesn't just know about life insurance, he knows about life, too. State Farm is there. 20 to 7, our score. Miami leading over Boston College. And don't forget the Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Win Wendy's. That is on Saturday, December the 10th, 7.30 Eastern Time from the Downtown Athletic Club in New York City. I wonder if Dave Thomas of Wendy's will be at that. There's a lot of commercials. <laughs> Wendy's, maybe he'll show up there. That will be... Uh, Highly watched show because a lot of people are extremely interested in that award each year. Still a wide open race also. A lot of players being considered for that. We're told that that uh, penalty, the illegal substitution is what was called against the Miami Hurricanes, the five-yard penalty. First down and 10. Line of scrimmage to the 35. Middle screen. Cannon hit immediately, and Cannon's going to lose a yard. Ray Lewis from his middle linebacking spot along with James Burgess. Burgess. James Burgess, who we said was alternating with Rohan Marley early in the year, and he was hurt, has really come on for this defense of Miami. Marvin Davis is shaken up for Miami. One yard. Second down. I'd like to show you how hard fought this game has been. Both sides have not been without their bumps and bruises. In fact, Miami's already lost a couple for the ball game with uh, with injuries. Dwayne Johnson went out. Ron Marvin Davis Wimberly started against Temple. He's up all night before the game. He was vomiting and before Temple and Warren Sapp took him under his wing, settled him down. Hartzell is going to be sacked by Warren Sapp. likes what he sees. This Miami defense has taken over this football game. They really have, and it looked like they moved Warren Sapp over to the other side to get him away from Greg Landry and Pete Kendall on that play. Came right through and made the sack. Sapp comes off the field. It'll be third down. BC needs the 25-yard line. Hartzell going to be hit from behind and sacked by Kenny Holmes this time. Kenny Holmes looked like he was shot out of a gun, Ron. He just beat the block of the tackle. Wasn't even close. Looked like he was almost moving with the snap. Fourth down. It's going to be coming from the right side. Kenny Holmes with a good jump. Makes a sack, almost tried to strip Mark Hartzell the football. Fourth down. Deep over the middle, intercepted. 
intercepted. That's Carlos Jones. in the ball game Miami about to win another one don't pay high prices for service you never get European Auto Center offers quality service at the lowest price our ASE certified technicians and the latest in computerized technology guarantee the quality service that you won't find at any other place in town take advantage of our poor service specials we also service Mercedes BMW and Volvo Stop by and test the difference. European Auto Center, located at 8720 Southwest 129th Street, or call 256-4031. Are you Dan Marino? Yes, I am. Thank you, driver. Oh, driver, get me to Hollywood's Young Circle. I want to have some chicken wings, some pasta, listen to the Inner Circle concert, and get me there before 12 noon on December 3rd. I don't want to miss anything. Woody, get out of my limo. Get out of my limo. Driver, take me to the wing thing. The bighorn sheep gather every fall in the upper pastures. Squaring off from one another, they recoil on their powerful legs and smash heads with such force that the sound can be heard for miles across the valley. Battles such as these will continue throughout the season, determining control of this hard-fought piece of turf. The Canadian Football League on ESPN2. It's wild. For the first time, a U.S. team tries for the coveted Grey Cup. 20 to 7 our score Miami and the BC offensive line and boy things got really tough on that last series by the way Pete Mitchell was shaken up on the play and he is up walking by himself going off the field but the trainer was over there with him for a long time a lot of the Miami players came over and gave him a pat on the back after he was up a lot of respect because good players no opposing good well players. they watch him on tape so there's a lot of respect they watch three films at least the Boston College before they came into this football game they know what kind of player he is Jones spins off a couple of tackles then it's going to be stopped at the 40 Chris Sullivan is the man that nailed him along with Brian May so this is the fifth Miami possession to start in Boston College territory tonight. Boston College has one timeout remaining, Ron, with 4.35 on the clock. Up on top, Chris T. Jones. He dropped the football. It was a sure six. Good heavens. Frank Costa just put it up in the air for Chris T. Jones. He just dropped this football. Wide open. Number 85, Chris T. Jones just couldn't bring it in. Might have caught it had somebody been closer to it, Mike. Looked like he was just going to run out of the stadium. <laughs> Why did he drop it? A lot of emotion. Oh, my gosh. And meanwhile, uh, Frank Costa was face down in the turf. And Frank will answer that question to Mr. Roberts after the game. Can you say Mamula? Let's take a timeout. 417 left to play. How you doing? Named Red Dog. Red Dog. Now, I see a lot of you dogs out there yipping and yapping, chasing after anything that moves. Well, you know, sometimes you ought to lay low. And even when someone's trying to yank your chain, just let it ride. Red Dog. Be your own dog. So when something good hey, baby. does come your way. Red Dog beard. Bold yet smooth. Easy to drink. You can make the most of it. When we asked two-time Indy winner Emerson Fittipaldi to be involved in the development of the Chrysler Cirrus, it wasn't to have him help sell the car. It was to have him help refine it. 
He pushed it to the limits around the track. He made suggestions. The engineers listened. The engineers made suggestions, and he listened. The result of this collaboration is a specially modified double wishbone suspension system unlike any other on the road today. The Chrysler Cirrus. It's not just a step above. It's the new plateau. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. Just help me this once, and I'll never ask for anything again. Ever. On the count of three. One, two, three. Oh. Next time, get a dependable interstate battery. We check them before you buy them for fresh power. Guaranteed. Only 4.17 left to play, and Miami with the football at a 13-point lead. again you got to be impressed with him tonight he went back into the pocket the pocket collapsed but he was able to step up inside the pocket throw that ball right on the mark to Jonathan Harris Terrence Wiggins. And now, Ron, you have to think with 3.30 on the clock. Now Miami, and of course, Nebraska is watching this ball game tonight. So uh, looks like a Nebraska-Miami match right here in the Orange Bowl. Did lose a couple, but the clock is running in under three minutes now. Caught at the 17-yard line. This is A.C. Tellison. Michael Reed pushes him out of bounds. And an injury to Terrell Green. Well, it's a good thing that the Miami has got some time before the bowl game. They've had a lot of kids shaken up in the same night. Well, BC wanted to make this a physical football game tonight. That's exactly what they accomplished. They're down 20 to 7, but this was the kind of game they had to play. Except for the few mistakes they started to make in the second half. It's an excellent game plan by the coaching staff led by Dan Henning. Mike Adamley, what do you have for us? Well, you talk about that potential Miami-Nebraska matchup in the Orange Bowl. It would be a rematch from 1992 and bring back pleasant memories for Dennis Erickson. The Canes pounded the Huskers into submission, rolling up 439 yards up in total offense. They went on to win it 22-zip. It was the seventh or the fourth national title in seven years and the second under Dennis Erickson, who was only then in his third season. Okay, Mike. So it's what it's going to be. Larry Jones was the MVP of that Orange Bowl. There he is right there, number 23. As they have a third down at about two and a half yards, and the clock running again now at uh, two minutes and 30 seconds. to be close to the first down. Mamula is the man who takes his feet out from under him. Boston College, Dan Henning said, let's take a timeout and stop the clock. And Miami's going for the field goal. 
Shove will take a break. 2.09 left in the ball game, and the Canes will go for the field goal. They were really growing up fast, too fast. All Kelly talked about was going to high school, and all I could think about was paying for college. Sure, I played around with a few mutual funds, but I was no expert. So I started talking to someone who could help, a broker at Dean Witter. We must plan for our client's future as if it were our own. Funny. Kids think their parents always have the right answers. I'm just making sure I do. We measure success one investor at a time. It's only a movie, except on a Sony big screen TV. Oh, good. Something romantic. Mm. <laughs> 20 to 7, our score. We got 2.09 left to play. So Dane Pruitt, who is 12 of 12. From the 38 and in, and this attempt is going to be placed down at the 22-yard line. 32-yard attempt. Good pass, and he's got it. The players of the game are from Boston College, Stephen Boyd, six tackles, one quarterback sack. And for the Miami Hurricanes, Warren Sapp, seven tackles, a quarterback sack, and six quarterback hurries. As part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa is proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these athletes. Pete Mitchell, injured a moment ago, he had uh, gone back to the sideline. We talked about him uh, often in that first half, particularly. This is a young ball club, Ron. This Boston College team, they got, of course, they lose Pete Mitchell, but they're going to have a lot of these players back next year to contend for the Big East. And you saw Frank Costa there pouring water over his head. Uh, he uh, is uh, going to graduate. Chris Sullivan on the sideline, also uh, Daryl Porter, some of the defensive players. Stephen Boyd, who was just named the MVP in the ball game tonight. Pete Kendall, also Tim O'Brien, offensive center for the Boston College Eagles. They're probably going to get an Aloha Bowl bid, so they're probably going to head out there in Honolulu. That's not a bad prize. I'll tell you what. If you play them, you better come with your with your chin straps put on tight. Toll free on the return, and he is going to be knocked down at the 11-yard line. Now the residents in college football scoreboard coming up next. Immediately following our ball game, 23 to 7, our score, 159 to play. Now Ron is our good friend Bino Cook appear at the scoreboard show. I think they beam him up from Pittsburgh, right? Well, I, I'm not sure when Bino is being beamed up. <laughs> He'll be there. I'm I'm being told though. So. Him up, all right. <laughs> well, that, that could be a whole new thing, a whole new thing. Beaming up, Bino. Mitchell. Mitchell still on his feet, breaking tackles along the way. And it's C.J. Richardson who finally puts a stop to it. and 30 seconds to play. Pass is caught by Watson. No, check it. That's Steve Everson, number one. Rather than number four, and he gets out of bounds close to the 40-yard line. It's a freshman receiver, Ron. 161 pounds, Steve Everson. 
Timeouts. Complete to the 42, Pete Mitchell. And this is uh, the spirit of this uh, BC ball club. Under 60 seconds here to play in our regular season. This is going to bring down the curtain on CFA primetime this year. Jay Rothman, our producer, an outstanding job this season. We appreciate what he's done. Chip Dean, also uh, our director again this year. And uh, these guys are, are, are just the best. J.K., <laughs> what a job. Also, uh, Mike Schwab, Carol Langley, Pete Redpath. John Lawrence, Brian Holder, our tech director, and Jonathan Freed on audio. He is the man that uh, if we sound good each week, which uh, the folks back home in Bristol seem to think so. Jonathan's the one who makes that happen. And there are a lot of others, and the, the place you get in trouble here is you wind up leaving somebody out, which you don't ever want to do. Mark Levy, Tom Small, Joe Vanderford, Peter Dingle, Timmy Two. Ricky Lee Harrell, Larry Faircloth also, Bruce Leiter, Billy Warndell, my spotter here in the booth, Todd Hallam, John Coleman'sberger, John Coleman'sberger, I think Ray Dell, Steve Fisher. I think everybody in the stadium we got. Well, we haven't gotten Freddie here. That's all right. Freddie Kiger. Freddie Kiger and Freddie Clough, who is uh, the man who heads up the uh, the entire unit. He is the operations manager. Robert Young. Yeah. Uh, Mike Adamley. Kim yeah. Butler, did I mention? Mark Levy, we got him on there. Dr. Jerry Punch, keep going. Chip Adams. President Clinton. And of course, Bina. They're about to beam up. <laughs> Guys, we do appreciate it. This is a heck of a crew. It's virtually the same one each year and the close thing. Swing pass caught out in the flat, and this could be the last play of this football game. And for Dennis Erickson, he said yesterday he thought they had put an asterisk by this one. They had marked it on the calendar and said that uh, they were going to play well. And Miami did. Now, the wake-up call might have been a little later than what he had anticipated. They didn't score their first touchdown until 4.02 left in the third quarter. But when it happened, it happened quickly. on the receiving end, four seconds showing on the clock. Hey, Dennis is looking around, trying to keep an eye for the ice. <laughs> they melted down here. Dan Henning. Good job by Dan and his staff this year. And they battle these Miami Hurricanes tonight. Just finally... Too much in the end zone. Caught for the touchdown, Clarence Cannon, and they say no, he caught it out of bounds. Our final score, Miami 23, Boston College 7. That's it from the Orange Bowl in Miami. And now let's join the residents in school board. Mike and Mike, thank you. Enjoyed the work of you guys all season long. Some people hanging with us to the end. Very interested to see how that ball game would come out. Coming up until 11.30 Eastern Time, the Residence Inn College Football Scoreboard Show, then 11.30 Sports Center. Bino Cook will join us in the next couple of minutes. A lot to talk about on the final day of the regular season in college football. In the Coliseum, Notre Dame and USC. A lot of heartbreak for the Trojan seniors in their career. No Rose Bowls, no victories over UCLA, no victories over Notre Dame. Trying to snap an 11-game losing streak, in fact, to the Irish tonight at the Coliseum. This game is not disappointed. Robinson was the coach the last time the Trojans beat the Irish. Rob Johnson puts it to his tight end. Johnny McWilliams, the six-yard touchdown, puts SC up 7-3, Johnson's 55th career touchdown pass. The Irish answer, Paulus scrambles. The fullback, Ray Zellers in the end zone.
10-7 Notre Dame at halftime. In the third quarter, Paulus driving again, sneaks it across the line, 17-10 Notre Dame. It stood up that way until the Irish attempted a field goal, up by seven. Stefan Schroffner's attempt is blocked by Israel Ifiani, picked up by Sam Knight. He'll run it back deep into Notre Dame territory. From there, the Trojans would punch it in on a Sean Walters touchdown run. The game is now tied at 17 in the closing minutes. USC has the football. We'll keep you posted on this ball game. Fresno State and San Diego State playing down I-5, and the Aztecs trailing by 13 points early in the fourth quarter. You know, in every great comeback, there was also a monumental collapse. It just depends upon your point of view. The day of the, the game of the day, I should say, was in Tallahassee. The Gators and the Seminoles, a game that'll never be forgotten by anyone who witnessed it, and fans of both teams on both sides who didn't witness it in person. Gators looking to put the choke on the Seminoles. Werfel to Jack Jackson. It was a 24-3 Gators lead at halftime. But with 13 minutes to play in the fourth quarter, trailing 31-3, Florida State begins the comeback. Zach Crockett busts in from five yards out. It's 31-10, just inside of 13 minutes to play, Craig. Well, what happens here is you get a chance for them to roll out to the right side. There's no pressure at all on the quarterback. And as long as there's no pressure, Chris, there's no way it can happen. 10-04, was 31-17, as can now find Andre Cooper. After the Florida State defense held, Canell. Out of the shotgun, beautiful ball handling skills for Cannell. Takes it into the end zone, 31-24, 5-25 to play. Then big players make the big plays in the big games. And Warwick Dunn right here makes the good catch. Now watch him break the tackle right there. Goes down the field, 37 yards, sets up the winning touchdown, or would have been the winning touchdown if he'd have gone for two. More on that in a minute. Rock Preston, meanwhile, a costly fumble early in the game in Gators territory. Some measure of redemption here. He gets in the house, and with 145 to play, down by one, Bobby has to make the decision. Do you go for two and the win? Yep. Do you kick the point, tie the ball game, and maybe get it back? Decides to kick it and tie the game at 31. Florida State had a couple of timeouts left. It ended at 31 all. The Seminoles did get the ball back, marched just barely into Florida territory when the clock ran out, 31-31. Both teams at 9-1-1, one, and, one, and both teams need a, a lot of help to have any shot at a national title. For Steve Spurrier, this one had to feel like a loss. We had some chances. Uh, when you play FSU, you got some chances to throw deep. We, we never seem to hit many of them every time we play them. We, we always miss a bunch against these guys for some reason. Oh, I mean, that's coach's decision. I mean, like I said, we were coming in the last drive, and that was the original plan was to go for two, and then, you know, the coaches said we weren't uh, that when we were on the field. So it was news to me, but, I mean, that's fine, you know, whatever the coaches want. Number one, I didn't want to lose the game. I simply didn't want to lose it. I mean, what, 31 to 3 with how much time left? 10 minutes left, somebody tell me? 11 minutes left, 31 to 3. I ain't going to lose. I don't want to lose that one. This football team, uh, folks, and I've been saying it all year. Oh, oh, oh. It ain't funny, Hubert. <laughs> this football team got up off its backside just like the coach. Here's the comeback. First three quarters, three points, 28 points in the fourth quarter, 265 yards. Can now look at the stats, but as I mentioned, the collapse, Florida only one first down after they took that 31-3 lead. They had three punts and an interception in those four possessions. In Happy Valley, Michigan State and Penn State, the finale for George Perlis, unless he can pull the upset and get the Spartans into a bowl. On the opening drive, Tony Banks to Derek Mason. 31-yard strike. Early on, the Spartans had a 7-0 lead. Penn State would tie it at 7. And then Paterno looks to the bag of tricks. Collins to Mike Archie. He did this earlier in the season. A second touchdown pass on the option. This one to Bobby Ingram, covering 55 yards. It's 14-7 Lions. But the Spartans showed some spunk early on. They would answer. Derek Mason at the goal line. Late.